Big dust, guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome in 2 o'clock on uh, Monday afternoon here. That is uh, going to be pretty interesting as we head towards the close. Very, very mixed session. Overall, the market's still a little bit red on the day, led by NASDAQ, specifically, specifically Google, Apple, and Tesla. Everything else pretty positive, so very much offset. Very mixed board this afternoon, uh, focusing on uh, semiconductors to the upside, everything else basically offsetting to the downside. This is what I was trying to get, pull up here. Uh, NVIDIA, 5.6%, just took out the highs on uh, a bit of a pullback right now, along with some of the other semiconductor names, SMCI included, but nice gap to the upside. We'll talk about it coming up here and uh, as to why, but nice gap higher this morning, hasn't looked back ever since. That being said, Tesla, as uh, you heard Sharif uh, mention there, 7.6%, 3% for Apple, 3 plus for Google. So uh, those three essentially offsetting uh, the rest of the entire market, which is uh, nicely higher, including yeah, five and a half for NVIDIA, Broadcom, AMD, Intel, Qcom, all uh, nicely higher on the day. There is a decent amount of strength in banks outside of Berkshire, American Express, and Blackstone. Downside, energy stocks are weak here. Some of the uh, hospital or healthcare related names, including UNH, uh, downside, continued downside move there for UNH. Visa MasterCard also under a little bit of pressure. That's an ugly chart, but we are coming into significant levels here once again for uh, Tesla on a huge pullback after, yeah, some uh, sales delivery numbers missed expectations. Apple also breaking in a big way. Uh, mentioned this morning, if you're with us pre-market, we let go of 180 back on Friday. Yeah, no, uh, no bounce yet. Anyways, we're basically back to lows here. 174.22 coming into uh, effect. For Apple, let's talk a little bit about what we were dealing with. If you're with us in the uh, first hour of this morning, make sure you join us every morning at uh, 8.30 Eastern. We get you set for the open at 9.30. We were talking about semiconductors specifically to lead off this morning. And yeah, this SMCI note going into the S&P 500, we learned that back on Friday. The rest of them gapping up again, more positive analyst moves, more talk of more demand. I sound like a broken record, but here's Nvidia at day highs, guys. Yeah, yep. and uh, hmm, SMCI, let's see. Expecting the 180 level as failed break and look for a dip off of it. Yeah, did we buy the dip? Okay, so there's 180. There is the dip, it holds VWAP, it holds the previous high, then it rips, then it holds the same level after failing the same break, and then to the moon goes SMCI. Oh, wait a minute, we have a key for this now. I have to find, it's, there's the moon. Still don't like the fact that you have to take out the moon in that, but we've, you know, we've had that discussion already. SMCI up 25%, and it hasn't even, and this is with a pullback. It got to 11.55. You know it's a big catalyst that this bad boy is going into the S&P 500. You throw in the fact that there's still some poor souls that are caught short in this. It was 9% short flow sometime last year. I forget the last time it was under 10%. Now it's 11% short. And this is what it's doing. When you break out of resistance levels, that's when the squeeze happens. And the squeeze is on an SMCI. It was long other things, just unfortunately not SMCI. It's ARM just, let me just go to ARM for a quick second. Here, there's ARM. With short ARM, was good. With short ARM, then it wasn't. With short ARM, and it still isn't. I got to wait for the 142 instead of taking these old pot shots at ARM. But I was long a couple of other names you may have heard of. Uh, I was looking at AMD today. That reversed a couple of times. I had initial short off 05, but when that broke out, we're long off the 208 level a few times. That's not short, that's covering the long. And look what's back above 208. Hmm. Back above VWAP is AMD. That's the price I've liked. Every time it's held that one, it's looked pretty good. I had double bottom there at a higher low. Now it's trying to break back above VWAP. So I do like AMD. I had one long in NVIDIA and it probably should have been take that instead of AMD because NVIDIA wants 875. This is an absolute rocket ship in video. It's weird. Like, whether you do well on a trade, you should always like, look back and say, what could you have done differently? Uh, the answer with NVIDIA was, why not go VWAP hunting on NVIDIA instead of AMD today? So you come up with a plan of action. Sometimes you've got to pivot from it in order to get the best gain. So it's not to say that AMD isn't a good long. It did work where I took it. But man, was NVIDIA the one, and SMCI, although I don't know that I like SMCI up at these tops. 
this starts to show something. NVIDIA looks like it's taken over this charge today. That said, you got plenty of time until you get to that S&P 500 edition. Uh, so it should run into that in a general sense. Yeah, we still we still got a couple weeks uh, yeah. a couple weeks left for it. It's the 18th, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere around there. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, some, somewhere around there. Uh, let me know in the chat if you guys know the specific date, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was 18. I think I read that this morning. But yeah, SMCI with a very strong move. We were looking for that 1100 that came that came in. Bless you, Neil. Uh, that came in real hot off uh, off of uh, what is this 10:45 around 11 o'clock ish, and then we did hold or we are holding above that as well. And then there's another name. I was talking about that uh, definitely could have been taken uh, uh, in step, kind of a sympathy, a little bit less volatile, and uh, maybe maybe uh, a little easier to risk on, and that's SMH. And it's been kind of looking uh, looking very similar, walking in step with some of these uh, names like SMCI and uh, and Nvidia. A little bit of a, a strong trend there. Yeah, sure, you wash off the open, but take a look at that nice grab of VWAP, and we've only been kind of slowly melting up on SMH. So that was definitely uh, an opportunity to be had as well. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, chip names moving today. We talk about AMD. Uh, did you talk about Intel as well? Intel, holy, this one is absolutely wild. We gotta like, come back to this. Crazy. Because I was actually sell telling this to Obi. Yes. Like every, at every single point I was short on Intel, oh, right, my right. out was literally the best place you could have bought. Like the best great reason to buy. Well, it is what it is. Like the, the only thing you can do when you're going to be wrong on a direction is get out. Like that's it. So get out before it explodes. Get out before it explodes. You're going to lose sometimes, man. Like every now and then, you're going to have to slap a fail uh, somewhere. That said, if you fight this stock and say, okay, well, I originally was looking for shorts on it. If you fight it, your entire day, week, month, you can ruin when a stock trends like this. Or you can get the you-know-what out of Dodge uh, and accept the fact that you're wrong. I'm looking for a VWAP pullback here. It doesn't work. I'm looking for a trend down after it fails a break of the high. And if there were reasons I liked it to the short side, suddenly this name went from, hey, let's look at it reject here. It's also the 50 period on the daily to this is going to close back above its 50 period moving average. Intel also uh, contributing. I do think this, this gets back up to 50. There's probably some sellers there uh, happy to take profits because that's where it was on earnings when it dumped. It was at the $50 level. So I would suspect it runs into some resistance if it gets to 50, but wow, unbelievable uh, run. Uh, and apologies for the, the, the uh, sneeze you guys heard off camera. But what's crazy is you guys, I'm telling you, like I got my Reactin. It's not like a Reactin ad or anything. That stuff doesn't work for me anymore. Not making it up. It's weird. Like it's like I have an immunity. An anti ad. <laughs> no, I think what happens is when you take an antihistamine, like you need like a different one. Like I got to take some <laughs> other stuff. My body's like built up this uh, whatever tolerance, I suppose, to that particular antihistamine. It's it's like it's already spring because allergies been going off the charts. Thank you very much, global warming, for a ruining out everyone's allergies everywhere, and b screwing around with maple syrup season, which is a problem. Don't mess around with maple syrup season. Serious. Mother Nature is just confused, to say the least, with, uh, you, know you, you know when you turn the narrator thing on on your computer? Yeah. You done that? It's, anyway, it's uh -oh. super annoying in my ear. Uh, let's talk about um, crypto here. What a day. We were just touching on the fact that this is, I mean, depending on where you look, this is from Bitstamp, the quote. This is a weekly chart. I mean, that's all-time highs. And you know we're a thousand ish away. Like it's crazy. This move is unreal uh, for Bitcoin. So anything related, obviously benefiting tremendously. Here's Coinbase up twelve and a half. All of the mining stocks just huge today. Yeah, Brendo. It's really interesting here how MicroStrategy is up almost twenty percent. Coinbase up twelve and a half, and you have all the mining names in the red to the tune of seven percent from Mara to nine and a third percent for CleanSpark. Likely something to do with Mara's earnings and not uh, not earning as much as the street expected, as well as the halving event that we're going to get in April. And you know, so they're going to be making less Bitcoin with the same effort. So we'll have to watch those ones as Bitcoin looks to make new highs. The other thing here, Brendo, is that. Bitcoin gained 21% last week. That's its best week ever since November 2021. We're almost at those all-time highs. It's nuts. It's nuts. I was just noticing, like Coinbase, the beginning of February, Coinbase was 122. It's almost a double 
Since the beginning Unreal. of February. Like, it's crazy. Unreal. Hmm. When is a long not a long? When you don't get back into it. Oh, just kidding. It's, uh, that's, I try to make it a trick question. Don't hate on it. But like it's, you can, I can get mad at myself for trying longs twice on Coinbase at 220 and one of them going to 222 and then stopping back out underneath. Now that's the thing. You got to get back into this when it gives you the same entry point right about like 12 o'clock. Now in my defense... And this is like, it's just true. It's not an excuse. It's just the truth. Like, that's literally the time that I was wrapping up the lesson of the day, like 12 to 12, 15. So I do that, and then I get up, you know, gray, you know eat some lunch, you get exactly the time when I should be getting back into and working back into the Coinbase long. So it's an absolute rocket ship. Congratulations! However, it's looking a little top-heavy up here. Uh, it, maybe it can hold like a... Maybe you can hold this 230. I'm not completely convinced of it. If you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's actually making a bit of a lower high here, uh, pulling back off of 67.5, up that 12%. I don't know if we have another salvo in it, but I think the more important thing is when you look at a long like that, if you get it for that stair step up, well, respect when it starts to go. It holds that same bottom and starts to go again. Like that's the real lesson to be learned. Like I should just had this twice. Uh, it's just that simple. Uh, Jay Lee, why not have a standing buy order on coin? That would have cut you. So the reason why not um, is pretty simple. Like when it's coming in here, I'm looking at it wick that bottom. It's like hold the bottom, hold the bottom. I'm looking for it to break out that local top. Like I don't know that I just want to sit in there on the long. I want to buy it as it shows strength off of that level as opposed to just sitting on it. You could do that too. You could just sit on the bid and have it go through you. But I was looking for it breaking back up above 220 and a quarter as opposed to just sitting down there in the bit. Like I see it make those wick bottoms. I like taking it as it's going into strength as opposed to uh, catching the dip buy. So you get up from your desk, you're gonna miss trades. It happens uh, all the time. The best you can do is try to find another one. Yeah, I think, I think that, uh, again, I was watching uh, IBIT today. Uh, not as, uh, I guess, uh, colorful as, uh, as coin there, as it is a little bit of a muted move, but a little bit more in step with, uh, of course, with what uh, Bitcoin's kind of doing. But take a look at this VWAP hold. We have not, uh, I guess, distinctly broken below VWAP. Sure, you had a one candle close there. There's a 15 minute chart. But for the, for, for the most part, um, over, oh, I guess, a uh, majority of these candles have held above today's VWAP there. So it seems like a little bit of a continuation off of that hold of uh, last week's high. Again, we talk about that shake and bake that happened right into that, uh, that 37 test. What is the high over here? Uh, 36.78. And uh, take a look at this. We kind of hold uh, right on top of that 37 in the pre-market and then just kind of continue uh, our way up. So as long as, I think as long as uh, Bitcoin's kind of holding some of these highs there, it did test 67. Um, some of these uh, ETFs are great places to look for opportunity. All right, let's go on to Apple. Pretty ugly day here. Uh, back to 174, still holding actually for support um, for Apple right now. But I mentioned this morning, if you're with us in the pre-market, it seemed like after we kind of gave up 180 last week, there was yeah. no turning back for uh, Apple, unfortunately. We get this big fine coming through from the EU this morning. Um, I mean, all of these Mag7, as this says, Mag7 stocks, not having a great day today. No, no, it's not. And you wouldn't even really be able to tell looking at the NQ. It's just down like a quarter of a percent. Um, yeah, with respect to the Apple headline, yeah, about $1.8 billion euro fine coming here, which is to the tune of about $1.95 billion. Uh, that's as a result of anti-competitive practices in the music industry, music streaming industry, to be exact. And it, this comes as a result of a 2019 complaint by their competitor Spotify, which, uh, you know, uh, said that they were basically trying to Funnel people away from other low-cost uh, music trading, pla music streaming platforms, Brendo. So we'll see how it happens. Yeah, pretty heavy volume behind this as well. 3% on the day here for Apple, just grinding along this uh, 174, guys. Yeah, the last couple of sessions on Apple breaking this 180 have done big volume. And that's not necessarily the best sign. We're bearish on it. We've been bearish, especially since that last break. We are, like, I, I am not short it now because I was shorting off 175. Like, once, once you didn't get an opportunity to fade the 179 to 180 area, that's where my target was. I was like, okay, give me that, and we'll take that short. It just never happened. So, you know, once it broke down from there, I looked for the opening range. Bottom about 10 o'clock, it bounced and got to 175. You can see acceleration down, 
back up and failing 75, so short into that level a couple of times, down into 74. I do feel like you have a shot at some lower highs in here. I still think VWAP's probably the way to go at this time of day. You got to convince me, kind of like Tesla. With Apple, oh, we're going to talk Tesla next. Um, but yeah, in this particular sense, you've got you've to prove that this is, it's showing some strength. It's just a weak stock until it's not. And underneath the 180 level, going back to the daily, you're under the 50 and the 200 period moving average. You don't really have big support until the mid 160s here on Apple. So I want to respect that. Just because we're not going to get to this, I want to point out Fisker, Fisker at the 48 level on Fisker was something I was talking to a couple of people about. I was short into it, then went into a breakout at the 48 level. I missed this chance to dip by. But if it can put up a, like, you know, make a higher high and higher lows, I think I would add to this. But I don't want to add at the same level. It's still a relatively weak name. It did have that Nissan news uh, going back to last week. And then sold on it today, but sold into what I love about it is it sold and then held the wick bottom after the news. Come to the chart for a second. So for Fisker, it sold right into the wick bottom Friday afternoon and then bounced. And once it, once it started you know, working off the 60, 48 level, that's where it closed. I was looking short underneath, but it's a long above that price into this 51 if not a little bit higher. So it's the only position I'm currently in, though I want to shorten into VWAP on Apple. Intel, uh, I'd like to be able to join Intel. 46 even is looking pretty interesting. I forgot to mention that. I think, uh, I think Apple, uh, like you said, Pretty, uh, pretty bearish outlook for the past uh, past couple of weeks. And uh, even, I guess, uh, myself, I was looking at that 200 test. We talked about that, uh, about that this morning. Um, a little bit of a failure to follow through on a higher time frame. Let's just go to a 30-minute here. Uh, yeah, take a look at this 30-minute chart. Actually, we'll just go hop up into the hour, get a better look. Yeah, so look at that. You, the, high, the high print is 199.62. And even before that, it was 198.23. So we couldn't really distinctly get into that 200. We've made lower highs since. Sure, you can take a look at it, uh, kind of uh, uh, zoomed out a little bit here, and we were kind of uh, pretty much sideways in between that 199 and the 160, so about a, about a 25 uh, to 30 point um, uh, range, it would seem. Uh, again, shorter time frame, just a couple of months. We've just been kind of chopping and churning in and around some of these prices. And again, a little bit better, a better view on the weekly as well. You can see right there. Uh, take a look at that. So we have been holding uh, above some of these previous highs relatively, but kind of sideways there with uh, a, a double test of that 200. So I think... Um, if we continue to sell, I don't really, uh, yeah, I think, I think this uh, 165 just seems like the next place because that's the last place in, as of recent where we did kind of catch a bid. Um, but I have no idea if we're going to get all the way down there. But it seems like we are quite heavy uh, over the course of multiple months there off the 200, off the 200 on Apple. All right, let's talk uh, Tesla here if you missed it uh, this morning. Uh, 60,365 sales in uh, China in February, that's down 18%, 18.8% year over year, 15.5% uh, from January, so not great. Um, 180, what was that, 188, I guess, was a bit of a pivot in the middle of the range on the daily chart, but I was just noting the, the waves here of selling on the daily chart for Tesla, getting bigger and bigger to the downside. Yeah, and it's not just Tesla that's really reeling off this uh, weak EV demand in China. You had XPEV, NEO, Li Auto, all three selling aggressively, high single digit or double digit. Yeah, as Brendo said, you know, they, they sold far less than they sold in January. So we usually don't do month over month increases. We usually compare month over month on the quarter. So what was what were we doing in January or sorry, March of 2023? Well, January, they sold this one about 71,500, Brendo, and then come February, even though it's a shoulder, uh, shorter month, about 1,100 ve less vehicles. So not a good look. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you remember the end of last week, I think it was Thursday or Friday, uh, Elon posted another video of the his robot walking around the he did? the, man, the plant again. I mean, there's there's lots of positive, potential positive catalysts to come. Yeah, sure. It's a matter of when those will get to the actual stock. But that's an ugly day, guys, for Tesla. I mean, it's nice that Optimus can do some of that stuff, but like, can Optimus get on the bid of this stock or something? Like, hit the buy key, Optimus. <laughs> the, the answer to the question, is Tesla along? No. 
We can wrap up the show now, because I mean, I think it's <laughs> like I thought. I came in today liking the Apple Show. <laughs> I don't know. It's not, it's not that funny. I came in today liking the Apple Short, but this silly, stupid Tesla 198 is easily the biggest and most ridiculous missed opportunity possible. Now, in my note, I was like, okay, Tesla has the same levels this week as last week. There's 198 for support. There's 205 for the short. And I simply said, same levels as last week, 205 short, 198 long. And then I say, eventually 198 should break. Okay, so where's the short, Neil? Uh, uh, oh, wait a minute, that's right, I didn't short the stock. Ha, 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 joke's on me. I shorted Rivian instead. Which didn't suck, but this would have been better. I mean, the 198 broke, I had a long in front, immediately got out, and it was so quick, like, I guess I could have chased it, 195 was available, 193, there were all kinds of places you could have jumped into it. I elected instead to short, like, when Rivian, like, Rivian popped when I was looking for the Tesla short, so, like, I was able to short into Rivian as Tesla decided not to bounce, so it was more of an opportunistic thing, shorting Rivian back into its low, then shorting Rivian and VWAP, and then trying again here for a tight stop, but it, it still should have been Tesla. There's nothing wrong with finding a sympathy play and, t and, and booking something on it. That said, it's better if you can go into the name that's moving more. I think that goes without saying. So, don't, you know, you always try to find ways to improve. Finding a way in a Tesla short would have been the way to go. But, wow, there is just no bid. No bid right now on Tesla. Where are we headed? Uh, let's call it, this is like the mid-170s. The 180 post-earnings bottom, that makes some sense for some support. Those could come into play. I think they almost will. Although this is worth mentioning. I've been talking about trend lines the last year. Bottom of this trend uh, is now in the 150 range on Tesla. And that's been holding, uh, that's been holding since this August bottom. So you had the, the local high here when it looked like it was still in the upward trend. When it made that top, the first bottom uh, was out there at, it was like, 100, like 211, there it is. Then since that, since that, top to bottom, it's then made a clean trend hold. And what was weird about this, when I zoomed it out, oh, this is going to be tough to see. Uh, when, you, when you zoom this all the way out, you'll like this one, Obi. Is that, that double bottom, you continue the trend line, it works Ooh. to the, uh, it works right to the split high. Yeah, yeah. So the post split high, if you go from there, it, this actually intersects that high. So I like this trend line. So when everyone says, where is Tesla heading? I kind of think it's headed to $150 in the back of my mind. Yeah, no, I, I, definitely, I definitely like that. Uh, when, when you have multiple touches of a, of a strong trend, it just kind of, uh, it's, it's like more confluence, and I, I really like that look there. Definitely, Tesla was, uh, was not along. Neil is 100% uh, correct. And uh, what did I do on it today, Neil, all day, uh, was try to look for the bid. And uh, didn't catch it there, didn't catch it through the 95, and it wasn't there at the 92 either. It wasn't there at the 91. Um, I guess it was a little bit there at the 97. <laughs> I managed to catch a point off of it, and that, that, that didn't really come in either. But yeah, super, super weak uh, on the day. Definitely, or I guess strong if you're looking, looking at it as a seller, strong selling to the downside off of the break of that uh, 198, 197-ish uh, level, 197 half, I think was the low of that uh, triple quadruple bottom from last week. Classic, a uh, bit, uh, bit of a support and resistance uh, uh, trade range break, and I am on the wrong side of it, totally not in the right mindset at all. But Neil was definitely right. Definitely no long, no bid was to be found, and trust me, I tried to look, and uh, it was not there. Uh, kind of, uh, we were talking about getting run over by, uh, by the, uh, by the Cybertruck, and uh, definitely standing in front of the Tesla was not uh, not a good uh, not a good um, choice today. But we are taking a little bit of sideways. We have sold off for majority of the day, and yeah, I think I think uh, I was a little stubborn, but I might I might continue to be a little stubborn in and around this 187 just to see. I have been watching it. Um, it did kind of start to slow down in a sense in terms of like it did catch a bid for a little bit, if if not for a few minutes, and then it came right back into this 187. So I will be continuing to watch this 187 on. Tesla to see if it's uh, if it's going to hold anything in store, but uh, other than that, nothing too crazy. All right, let's wrap up with um, some retail. Uh, well, Macy's specifically uh, on some M and A talk this morning. There was uh, more interest in an uh, increased 
uh, bid from Arkhouse and Brigade Capital to $24 a share. It's been a fade, though, off that high. Uh, if you go to the daily chart around that uh, 22 area, it's been a fade all day. Yeah, they're trying to sweeten the deal, Brando, upping their offer from $21 to $24 a share. That represents about a 33% premium from where it closed off last time. We know they're engaged in aggressive restructuring right now. They're going to close about 150 stores and try to redirect that money into their high-end brand Bloomingdale's, opening more of those around the country as they stand to make more money there, better margins on those products, Brando. Uh, Company valued at 6.6 .6 billion. Yeah, still holding 20 and a half, I guess, that uh, pre-market support all day, but uh, yeah. Uh, sideways action here, guys, for Macy's today. Um, what's coming up tomorrow on the midday? Yeah, so we're talking about short selling all week, Brendo, and tomorrow we're gonna be doing a Dara's favorite, trading ranges. We're gonna be talking about shorting a trading range, so make sure to check that out with Dara and I tomorrow on how to trade right at 11. Hmm, interesting, because if you look at shorting a trading range. What's interesting about that is like a trading range breakdown is kind of what Macy's could be doing here. That said, support support till it isn't. I don't like I uh, what I see is last week's double top at 2050 was exactly what Brennan just said. And then look at the 2050 level hold. I don't think you you're cresting down into that same bottom until it breaks. Why not shoot for a long? It's still gapped up. It's still got the news with it. So I don't know if the, the 2050 isn't along this afternoon uh, on Macy's. But uh, aggressive restructuring, huh? Like, here's what I, I'm a nerd. So I remember the line in Star Wars, it's like, aggressive negotiations means negotiations with a lightsaber. So what is aggressive restructuring? Like, like what does that even mean? You're just throwing a term out there. Like, you're just restructuring. What aggressive restructuring? Or I'm wagging my finger when, when we're cutting costs? <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't really matter. I just think it's, sometimes you hear these terms, and it's like, okay, well, you probably used restructuring the last time you tried to talk it up, so now you just throw an adjective in front of it, and uh, now all of a sudden it's supposed to mean something more. But what matters here is with the higher bid, it might put a temporary floor on it. And I think this 2050 level could be something to look at if it can hold this afternoon. And if it doesn't hold this afternoon, then can it hold, you know, maybe, can, maybe can it hold the $20 level if you're looking at this on the week? Because the last time it was up here, there was consolidation before it fell. Well, if it can start to hold the same accumulation levels, I think there's an interesting long to be had here, especially with a bid. Maybe the board doesn't like the bid, but it's still there, and you should respect it. So the, the 2050 level looks pretty interesting uh, yeah. for a bit of a bid, I think. Yeah, I think uh, I think I definitely agree with you there. Kind of just pulling up uh, pulling up the 15 minute here. We talked about this in the morning that earnings reaction high, and yeah, that 2050 uh, definitely stands out quite uh, quite starkly there. You can see earnings reaction high as well as earnings day one uh, high as well. A little bit wiki on uh, on top of that 2050, and then we gap up, and now we're holding above that all day pretty much. You could that you can see that opening reaction low uh, with a little bit of a grab of that level and then we've only held above that all day. Where is VWAP, you may ask? VWAP, we are trading below that 2081 right now. Oh, this is so good. Uh, Johnny Mnemonic, you have no idea how topical this is. Because Johnny, like, I'm a nerd, so I made a Star Wars reference and like five people get it and the rest of you don't. Um, but where is it? It's, uh, there it is. Uh, he goes, Luke, I am your father. No word of a lie. My daughter is seven years old and we, we finished Empire Strikes Back this weekend. I'll try to, I'll ask her, so when it comes to like social media, my daughter, I always ask her like, are you okay if, I should straighten this before Ram Ram yells at me, um, are you okay if, we, if, if I show this to people on the show? And I kind of, like I filmed her, have you seen, you, do you know Star Wars? A little bit. So do you understand? <laughs> Okay, so like in the Empire Strikes, if I say something big happens in the Empire Strikes Back, do you know no, what I'm no, talking no. about? No, no, I've seen all of them. Okay, so you know what happens in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. I okay, think I'm pretty which sure. is what? I, I, I don't remember the sequence of the movies, but the Empire might strike back. All right, well, you, now you're just going to be spoiled for you anyways, because I, okay. <laughs> Clearly you don't know. It's when, it's when uh, Luke finds out that Darth Vader is yeah, his yeah. father. So like one of the big things... He never actually says... He says, no, I am your father. Everyone, yeah, everyone says, Luke, I am your father. Everyone thinks he no. says, Luke, I am yeah. your father. But he's yeah. like, no, I am your father. So anyways, but we're watching it. My daughter is like, she's like huddled on my lap. And the cover is like, and like, like just like this, because she's all scared and stuff. And I have the phone like that. I'm taping it for my parents so they can see it. Um, I'll, I'll, if she's cool with it, I'll, I'll show it to you guys maybe tomorrow or later this week. Or I'll tweet it out or I'll put it, I'll, I'll put it out for you guys. 
but let's just say it was a fun reveal. Because for a kid, like Luke's the hero, and like the most evil person in the world, like his dad. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I'll show it to you guys. Um, but yeah, spoiler so the alert. The first time is definitely a little. Uh, it's you, traumatic. Yeah, man. you get a little taken aback, and you're like, "Whoa, is that? Did that just really happen?" You know, it's. Uh, Back when they were actually well, good know. at. Um, Making subverting expectations. Oh, yeah. I find now, like when you get surprised in a movie, I'm like, it's not, like, no, that's not surprising. Uh, Dante saying my Darth Vader voice was priceless. Like, okay, so the question becomes, like, hopefully that's, I'm gonna take that as a compliment because I'm in a really good mood right now, <laughs> but uh, my impressions kind of suck. I do it all, I, she loves the Darth Vader voice. I do it all the time. Um, I, think, I think I'm terrible at it. James Earl Jones, absolute legend. Obviously doing that voice. Uh, but Macy's, we'll see if we can't get that bit. I still want to short some Apple, but I found myself, I find myself in Alphabet first. So we come to the chart for a second. I don't know if we have to go back to the desk. Let me know if we do. Um, but Alphabet came into VWAP first before AM, AMD. Uh, Apple did. So this is 133. I am short at 90s very creatively. It's kind of, it got up there then went sideways. So this starts rolling over a bit more. I might add to this. Uh, ALX, too bad Disney ruined Star Wars. You know, they haven't completely ruined it. They're doing a really good job of ruining Star Wars, but uh, it, isn't completely, it isn't completely dead. There's some really good things that they've done uh, with some of the shows. But uh, as far as the other movies, I think they took some great characters and ruined them. That said, I do absolutely love some of the books. For everyone that complains about the new three movies, uh, the book leading up to them was fantastic. Great characters. They just didn't really expand on any of the good stuff in there. Uh, I'm out of Fisker. I'm going to quickly show you. It could not hold on to the 47. I had 48 long, and the 49 was the best I got. Couldn't quite break the 50 level. It's a penny stock, so if I'm starting to take profit at one cent, I am creatively getting out when it breaks the one cent down. That's a couple of percentage points. So I'll give up on Fisker. The new short is in Google. Apple's not even at VWAP, but it is getting closer. So Apple... I am looking to fade in here on Apple. I just want to be patient. Let it get to our price. And Tesla is apparently still along. Yeah, well, yeah. Neil sees me um, kind of uh, being a little stubborn with this. But I, again, I said, like I said, I do like this kind of sideways on that 187. Like, I'll let it, uh, I'll let it kind of uh, work itself out. Let's see. I know I'm being a little stubborn with the idea. Uh, in the morning, I definitely was. But I did take a little bit of a break and come back to the ticker a little later. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see what we do in and around here. Again, this thing has been selling off all day and holding 187 now. Uh, what is it? It's, it's 2.30, so pretty much since, uh, since 9.30 to 2, we have been uh, pretty much selling off quite aggressively. I was watching the tape in and around this flush. Uh, from that 189 into that 187, uh, definitely some interesting stuff. Yeah, we are making uh, lower lows, sorry, lower highs as well. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can kind of make it back to make it back into VWAP or even a break of trend here. Uh, here, I let me pull it up and show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, a potential break of trend. Look, I have it up on the 30 minute here. Uh, again, you can see it even stronger on the one hour. Very, very uh, uh, strong to the downside here. So yeah, just looking, looking for a potential uh, uh, pop. You can see the 15s kind of becoming dojis here, a little indecisive for the past 45 minutes. Can't really break down. It was aggressive to the downside. It kind of lick grabs 187 a couple of times. Yeah, I think I want to put, uh, I think I want to try it out there. Then again, I have no idea what it's going to do, but I'm willing to put, uh, put it on just to see if it'll, if it'll come through there. In Q also holding that 18.3 and then ES pushing towards its highs as well. Uh, let's see if ES can make some fresh highs on the day. NVIDIA, oh boy. The Nasdaq's can, flat? Yeah, the Nasdaq, the, yeah, pretty much. Look at this. Both the ES and the NQ has been pretty flat. Apple down. Point two, you know, two point eight. If I scroll, Amazon's flat. Uh, if you keep, if you keep going, like just an idea of what's happening. Like Microsoft is flat. Meta is flat. I think you know where I'm going with this. Like we've already talked about Alphabet's down, so that's actually weak. Nvidia is up, and so I just saw it in the chat. Nvidia is holding up the entire Nasdaq. Well, okay, that's not entirely true. Like there's other things that are strong today, but wow, Nvidia. Like even. Like, you look at something like a Broadcom, Broadcom ain't doing, it's not doing anything right now. Like, it actually, we, we, I was talking to this to you, to you about the um, liquidity grabs. Yes. At opens. 
Broadcom had a pretty extreme one at the Open today. And then the rallies that happen after this. If you ever happen to be trading a stock and you see a legitimate wick like this, like Broadcom drops from 14.20 into 13.6 and then is immediately recovering $30 higher. And then it does this consolidation. Like when this breaks out, you better believe that's a pretty bullish reversal. And you usually want to be long in the short term. That said, the stock did absolutely nothing with it after the fact. It just couldn't continue. But when you see that happen at the open, you should be looking for some opportunities to jump into the long. It's just a very, very weird one. NVIDIA is about to break the high again. Yeah. Got to start buying some dips in NVIDIA. Oh, I was buying AMD dips instead of NVIDIA dips today. The thing is crazy. If you look at it on like a higher time frame, again, like a 30 minute or like a one hour, it's only gone up. There has been pretty much no selling on NVIDIA. Take a look at this right here. Pull it up on the 30, pull it up on the one hour right there. Boom, you get like one, okay. So you get a little bit of a three bar pattern, if you guys know what that is. Bit of a, uh, a one leg up, bit of a doji indecisive, and then another leg up right away. Uh, three bar on the one hour, continuing into 875. Neil, it seems like, uh, seems like Neil, uh, seems like SMC, NVIDIA wants to join its buddy, uh, uh, SMCI here uh, in and around that uh, 1K mark. Oh, we're I, I, flying now. Yeah, we are flying now, catching a bit of a bid. There's a little bit of a bid on Tesla. Here we go. We are making, uh, I guess, a relatively, it's a little different than on the way down, right? We didn't have as much aggressive, uh, uh, aggressive buying, and now this is maybe the first sign of some aggressive buying. Let's see how far we can get. I got VWAP all the way up at 191. I don't know if we're going to do a full-on reversion, but we have sold off quite aggressively on the day. Where, where will those shorts cover? I have no idea. That's a great question, but uh, guess what's back at 415? It's that... That pesky Microsoft level. Uh, this is where I was buying Microsoft at lunchtime. Uh, well, okay, toward the end of the morning show, it wasn't really a lunchtime, but bouncing off that 415 looks pretty good. It's trying to get into VWAP there. I got to watch out for this Google as it's pressing the 133, and I am now uh, on the bid into. I want 46s where it was kind of holding higher, but I might look to the 4625 levels. We're going to the desk uh, to take her some business with Brendo. Get as much as 50 to 1 leverage when trading Forex at IG. Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer zero commission trading using a Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to 10000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. Quite aggressive. It's worth remembering for anyone that was, if you were not paying attention to the market on Friday, um, a little something happened, pretty much. Like this is like on a fifth, on a sixty-minute chart. That's what a sixty-minute looked like on Friday. It was just like absolute strength going in. And I think one of those, if we see something like this, like strength, I'm looking for names that have a little catch-up to do that have held higher lows. Like Microsoft going back green at the four fifteen level that I like is looking like a little something. So that's why I'm going over to Microsoft. Intel's already strong, and I like forty six there. But I'm kind of liking this hold at 415 on Microsoft. Apple's getting into the pocket, though. Like, here's, here's Apple just churning into 175. Now, I don't, if I'm shorting this, by the way, A, it looks very strong. Like, why would you short into this unless it shows weakness? I'm not seeing reasons to be short this until it shows me some weakness off of this. It's powering into the level. I got away with it doing it at 1054, and it happened to work. I'd rather not repeat that uh, again. Uh, Jameson, meanwhile, the banks are crashing. Well, you know, the banks don't care what's going on uh, in tech land. In tech land, the market looks incredibly strong. And give me some intel. Don't know if I'm going to be able to get that one in the 20s, but I am back there in the 20s on intel. Oddly enough, in this move, Alphabet's holding VWAP in the 133 level. And you guys, that's look a at good the sign. MQ. On strength, like you're not really Four. powering through. I just need to see weakness if I'm going to add into this on the way back into the downside. I can hear Brendan, guys. I think Brendan's live. During Some, someone buying the whole market right now. Are they, though? Yeah, look at the ES and the NQ. We're blasting off. We are blasting off. We are Remember? blasting off. Okay. Somebody turned on the algos. Yep. Dude, somebody has turned on a buy algo, at least a little bit. I just bit want to here. see if even Mara's moves. catching a bit of a bit. During this, and like that's you been said, one of the weakest. Friday, we had that, we had that Video action, program buying. Just you know, now it's just boom, right up. Oh, it's okay. Wild. You can see it. Like, it'll... look at that. Fifteen one. Was it fifteen one? Brendan's mic is hot, guys. 
wild. This thing just keeps on keeps on going. 188 halves. We were talking about Tesla at 187. Now it's at 188 half. Oh boy. Why don't I have more of this? This thing is going absolutely wild there. Oh boy, why am I not? Yeah, going Apple's long turning. Right so, uh, Softy is. Google's turning. Yeah, Google is turning. Why Amazon as well, off of what? Off of 178? Hello. That's pretty. Yeah, okay, so uh, there we go. Spy fresh highs, 450, uh, sorry, 514. I did have that in my notes here. Uh, if we hold 513, look for a push into 514. That was just Friday's high, right? Kind of doing that move all in one wipe, absolutely Look wild. At Apple's there. accelerating right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean we've been selling off all day, Neil. So it's like maybe is it is that like a case of pressure just cooling off into the close or Look like at one seven? This is ridiculous. They just wanted a discount. I don't know. I don't see like there's nothing hitting the wire that I see. No, uh, it's two forty. You're not even like you're not at the, like the. It's not like a power hour bounce or anything. I think you just maybe found a temp bottom uh, here on a few ind individual names like. Five minutes ago, we were talking about how the NASDAQ was being led by a single, uh, you know, essentially NVIDIA carrying it to the upside. Well, now you have Apple off the bottom breaking VWAP over 175. Uh, I'm staring at Alphabet, which I'm short right now, off this VWAP. I mean, it's still kind of going sideways, but it's, it's starting to catch, uh, catch up and pick, some, pick up some steam. Meta, however, I mean, this is above VWAP. It just held a 500 level. This looks pretty spicy. I mean, if one or two of these can catch a bid and continue going, Apple probably most importantly, but uh, if Meta could do it, if Microsoft could do it, they're all trying to hold VWAP right now. Google's under it, so I think that's a relatively weak one, but if one of these can hold on, I'd want to join uh, any of them. What is Coinbase doing? Uh, coin, phew, Coin's still breaking highs. Oh, wow, Coinbase. Yeah, right in here. That's where it was. Like, you got this breakout at 220. I should have been all over that. But yeah, Coinbase, I don't know if I want to chase that. I'm on the bit of Intel, as mentioned. I don't know if I want to reverse Google or jump over to a Meta or an Apple instead. Uh, but I'm out of, I'm out of Google because it broke out VWAP. I will cover a trade. I'm not at the reversal point just yet. Although, I'm, I don't know if I should be talking myself into a reversal. I should be. Should be reversing. I just don't know if I like it here in Google. Apple looks stronger than Alphabet to me. I'll jump out of Google, get out of the way of this nonsense, Oof. but uh, 175 looks pretty darn good if you can get longs in front of it. Just need this thing to calm down a bit. Yeah, absolutely wild there. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of take some off on the first pullback right there. We did wipe up about a point and a half on a ticker that's like, uh, that has been selling off all day. Sure, the market is very, very strong, but look at the, look at the uh, NQ there. A bit of a wick uh, back into this range that we've been doing pretty much all day, right? Uh, so we did snap right back up. Wick, uh, currently making a wick. How much time is left on the 15 minute? Wow, two minutes makes it makes a little bit of a, uh, of an interesting move going into the close of the 15 minute candle. We make that wick uh, towards those highs, reclaim the range there, uh, and uh, yeah, okay. So I'm just holding on to holding on to breadcrumbs here on to, on on Tesla again. Let's see. I'm I'm curious to know: is there another place that I can get some more uh, on this on this turn here? Is this the turn that's that'll take us back to VWAP? I have no idea. But again, we talk about distinct different behavior it is a little distinctly different from the selling that we've been getting pretty much all day here on uh, on Tesla first sign of a potential curl again we were talking about here uh, I was talking to Neil about some interesting stuff I saw on the tape watching this flush all the way down and then some interesting stuff happens here kind of gets me long I'm like all right maybe not yet but that 187 just comes right back in and we do push past that 188. So a bit of a, a, bit of a channel here potentially. Let's see what's, uh, what's gonna happen. But like I showed you guys earlier, that 30 minute chart, absolutely wild there, only red candles. And then this is the first green on the 30 minute on Tesla after kind of slowing down. Look at, look at the candle sizes there. Very long acceleration right off the open, aggressive selling, one of the longest candles on the day. And then incrementally getting a little bit smaller and smaller until you pretty much turn into an indecisive doji. Uh, some interesting price action indeed happening on top of that 187 and uh, some, some tape confluence as well, it would seem. And uh, yeah, as long as we hold this 188, there goes Google, I'm seeing, and yeah, it's Apple as well. It's still going to the upside there. So uh, it would seem that some of these other names, no real reason to sell as of right now. Uh, it would seem that uh, maybe some uh, shorts might be offside with this kind of price action.
You know, it looks like, like Google, it's a relief rally. Google's going, Alphabet's going, but look at Microsoft. Microsoft can't even bust VWAP. Like, look at the, yeah. look at just nothing happening over here. Like, look what's happening on the left. Uh, so I think you're getting a little bit of a divergence here where two of the weakest names, Apple and Google, I'm, I'm just on the bid in front of 50s on Apple. I'm just going to get involved. Uh, but it is 2.45. We do have a guest. As I'm going to jump on the Apple train. We're going to send you to the desk with our first guest of the day. Auto AMIX on the NASDAQ with us uh, this afternoon. It's a medical device company focused on advancing technologies uh, and revolutionizing how diseases involving the nervous system are diagnosed and then uh, the treatment for which comes along with that. Uh, Lori Bisson is CEO of the company and joins us this afternoon. Hey, Lori, good to see you. Um, this hey, is, uh, we're going to focus mostly on the pancreatic cancer side of things. And this is a uh, topic, unfortunately, that too many people have been touched by um, in you know years uh, going through family members and so on. Um, give us an overview here, first off, of the technology that we're speaking of. The company just recently started a uh, proof of concept trial for this treatment. Tell us about it. Well, our, our technology really focuses on the nervous system. And the nervous system is responsible or at least involved in every major bodily function and, and dysfunction in the nervous system can drive disease, disorders, and pain. And in spite of this, physicians today lack the tools to sense and treat our nervous system in a reliable manner because nerves aren't visible with the tools that we have today. You can't see nerves in x-rays or MRIs or even with the highest capability sensing technologies in the market today. We're developing a first-in-class catheter-based um, microchip-enabled sensing array that can detect and, and differentiate nerve signals. And we can do what no technology is capable of today because our design provides for 3,000 times greater sensitivity than the closest technology out there. And the key um, in our technology is that we've moved the processing of the signal right next to the signal, right next to the nerves that we're trying to read um, using a proprietary microchip. And we believe our technology is going to enable doctors to sense and, and treat individual nerve bundles and then come back and verify that treatment. Uh, congratulations, first of all, um, on, the, on the IPO. Um, when it comes to the, the pancreatic cancer market as a whole, this is a multi-billion dollar market, as I mentioned. Too many people, I think, have been, have been touched by cancer of some sort, some you know, pancreatic cancer specifically. How does this treatment stand as far as in comparison to others that are available? Mm -hmm. Well, 90% or so of, of pancreatic cancer patients experience pain with their tumor, so a huge majority of patients that have pancreatic cancer. And a significant portion of those patients can't get relief from available therapies today. It's primarily um, drug-based. It's opioid uh, prescriptions that pancreatic cancer pain will blow right past pretty quickly. And there are some um, a little bit more advanced therapies out there. Um, there's a ethanol ablation technology that's used but it's very um, in, in, unprecise, let's put it that way. They're literally injecting the patient with ethanol, attempting to ablate those nerves that surround the tumor that are, that are signaling pain. Um, and so what we're doing with our technology is going in and, and looking for the exact source of the pain. We're targeting the, the overactive nerves, sending those pain signals, and we're ablating with a much more targeted, safer approach um, and we think that's going to end up giving patients a safer, more durable pain relief outcome. A exit strategy here for the company? Yeah, well, we, um, we have the ability to provide vision to a lot of companies' technologies that are already on the market. So if, if a company is out there providing an ablation therapy, like, for example, Medtronic with a recent renal, renal denervation clearance, um, our technology is going to enable visibility to their technologies. And so we believe ultimately our company is a likely uh, acquisition target to a number of electrophysiology companies that are out there in the market with existing technologies. In the meantime, we're going to operate this company to be ready to stand on its own. Um, our team has, has built, designed, and launched 
a number of successful med tech devices. And so we're poised to do that. We just have the expectation that somebody out there is going to want this technology before we get all the way to commercialization. Uh, we talked about the uh, proof of concept trial now underway for the pancreatic cancer specific uh, treatment. What can investors expect going forward into the next 12 months here? Yeah, you, you can expect an exciting 12 months for autonomics because we will start to get uh, some results from that first in man study. This is a procedure that's never been done in humans before. We're going in transvascularly ablating uh, the nerves in the pancreatic region to affect pain. And as we start to get the results from that clinical trial, we'll, we'll start to, to signal uh, what we're seeing there. Um, and so also those results become a really important part of a package that goes um, into a breakthrough filing with the FDA. We'll make a request to them for breakthrough status. And um, if we're able to achieve that, that really leverages our path through the regulatory process here in the U.S. If, if somebody is just watching today, Lori, and, you know, just from a pure research standpoint, wanted to learn a little bit more about this, um, where would you send them? Where would I send them for research? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's that's a good question. I would have them look at renal denervation. Look at recent clearances for uh, Medtronic and for a, a little smaller company called Record. You'll see companies are starting to uh, take electrophysiology outside of a cardiac focus and into the rest of the peripheral nervous system. And that's where we're going to have a huge advantage. So watch what's happening in the overall space and, and then make that connection for yourself between what we're able to provide to those technologies that are starting to move out to the peripheral nervous system. As we said, AMIX on the NASDAQ, recent IPO. Uh, you can check it out uh, today, guys. Go and check it out. Uh, Autonomics, Lori Bisson, CEO. Great to see you. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much. And, uh, by the way, hey, moving the markets to the upside. You know, it's always, it's always good you have a guest in the market. Uh, seems like it's enjoying the fun because I look, I, I just went into a long and Apple. You guys know about that. But Google's going higher. The Nasdaq was briefly, and I mean like for a split, for a couple of split seconds, uh, it was actually green. And of course, we ended the interview. If we carried on for another couple of minutes, I promise you this market, the Nasdaq would have been green. The ES did go green during that time. But uh, I mean, everybody... Everybody's been has been touched uh, and affected, and it's always good to hear stories like this, um, because you know it's, it's all well and good to, to root for stocks, but sometimes it's also good to root for what companies are doing. I, I think it's a heck of a lot more fun. I am short something. Okay, fair enough. It's arm. Arm is relatively weak. It has been. I'm jumping back into a 141 short on arm. I was in this one during lunch. Okay, middle of the day. It was actually, I had already eaten. It was past lunch. Uh, but 141, and I got stopped out in here. And look at it as the market makes fresh highs. If the market's making fresh highs and the stock is making lower highs, that to me is trend down. So I shorted the 141. I was putting in the chat that there's still some relative weakness. I did not take the Google long. All right, so I reversed. I got out of the short, and I didn't reverse long. I went long into Apple instead. Probably a mistake. I think I should be in Google over 133 as well. If this market holds green today, I think Alphabet should hold VWAP and get to 134, if not the big 135 level. Uh, Apple, I think, has a chance to get to the 176 as well. But I know your Tesla is continuing its charge to the upside. Yeah, it's attempting. attempting. Nothing? It's, no, it's... A Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Nice, nice, nice. It's a, continuing its charge. I know. I'm, I'm a little lost in the sauce, Neil. I gotta I got I got stare down this tape um, uh, for, for good reasons, as uh, I did kind of punch into the pop, and uh, the pop is popping no more. Boo. <laughs> I'll you, I'm, I'm sad now. <laughs> I thought that wasn't really that bad of a pun. What do you guys think? Was that okay? Oh. A Comp SRX to flux capacitor is fluxing. I like that. Flux. You, Ramin's laughing like she has an idea what the flux capaci capacitor is. Okay, how fast do you have to go to, uh, to achieve time travel? 88. Oh, Ramin got it. She jumped in with the 88 miles per hour. How many? 1.21 gigawatts is how much you need. Uh, that's what, well, anyways, now I'm, just, now I'm just ridiculous. You know the answer to the universe? Uh, 42 yeah, of is course. the answer. Universe. Everybody knows. Uh, but do you know what phrase you have to say if you want to stop Gort from destroying planet Earth? 
You don't. You got me on that one. And now the and now the world is over because yeah. you don't you don't you didn't remember to say Gord Klatu Barada Nikto. Um, and that just proves if you don't know all I, I of them, I had it written down somewhere. All of them, if you want to be an actual nerd in this world, I know them all. Can't stump me. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, so Apple's going back up. I want. I'm jumping in if I can get Google here. Google's starting to break out. Let's just wet our beak. The beak. The beak is getting wet here as this looks like it's trying to accelerate. So I was looking for a consolidation. I should have just jumped in on the dip buy. I think that was a mistake. But the consolidation breakouts happening on Alphabet, and I think maybe the 134 could happen. It's looking pretty strong uh, there at that point. <laughs> Uh, Matt Carnes, it is, the DeLorean is a ridiculously heavy car. Uh, back when Sean and I had our own floor, one of our first traders, like our original four traders, one of them, his dad owned a DeLorean. Ooh. And he, he drove it to the office one time. Like, That's you don't really cool. like that. It's a solid, it's a solid vehicle. <laughs> Just, that's all I'm going to say about it, uh, whether or not it's I think practical. I've seen, like, one uh, at, at a past auto show. Uh, I think, I, yeah. but uh, that's the closest I've ever gotten gone to one. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful, cool car. concept. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool concept. This market, man, what a, what a I move. Know. If we hold green today, what would stop it? Like, what, just when, just you when everyone's it? whining and complaining about only Nvidia and the chip showing you strength, Google. By the way, I should have pointed this out on the daily chart. This is the 200 period simple on the daily that it's bouncing off of. That's 132.75. So Google. Holding that and breaking out above, oh, I should have reversed that. Every time I look at it, I'm like, why didn't I reverse that uh, at that price? That's holding the 200 period moving average. All that said, uh, we did jump into an arm short because it's arm, and it seems like it's a relatively weak one. Already heading to the downside, we'll ring the register. We will not look at horses in the mouth while the market is going up. Short it from 141 into the 140 level. If it bounces here, fair enough. I can live with that. We've taken some profits. Tobes in the chat. Mara, question mark. That could be a bit of a bottom being made in Mara as I get into Intel. Yeah, that's, what do you think, Obi? That is the biggest volume spike, okay, Ooh. since the opening range, biggest volume spike at the bottom, and then green ever since. Smells, uh, smells a little uh, capitulatory. Is that, is that a word? I think so. Is capitulatory an actual word? I'm pretty sure it is. Adara? I need to check. All right. Well, huh? Adara's a writer, and if she's not sure it's a word, it's probably not a word. All right, cool. But, I mean, I don't know these things. It's a word. It's a word. Might be a word. Boom. I don't know what to... I, sorry, I wasn't even on this page. I'll do props. Hey. I, I mean, I'm, I got a nitpick for that props thing. <laughs> I got two nitpicks for that props thing. To watch. Here, here's well, a what's going on with the props thing? Two things. One... If it's supposed to be, because it's supposed to be myself and Sean, there's an obvious nitpick, which I'm not going to bother you. <laughs> the other one is nobody wears a suit around here, so why the heck are the two people clearly in suits? Nobody except for Raheem wears a suit to this office. Yeah. I'm hey, just wondering. There was a time where uh, somebody used to wear a tie. Not going to mention anything. You're not allowed to wear ties. But, there uh, was a policy, uh, by the way, I just got a dip by into Intel. So Intel into 46 and a quarter. I uh, just came back into this range. You're going to get back to the trading for a split second, but I didn't want to finish that story. When I was a trainee, um, you actually, the, 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 the story was, at least this is what I was told when I was a trainee like 20 years ago, is if you did wear a tie on the trading floor, it would get cut off. Yep, that's and what that, I was one of the owners of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the firm, like he would cut your tie off. Now, I know for a fact that when I came in for an interview, there was a trainee that also had a tie, and no one cut his tie off. But he certainly didn't wear it on the first day. Um, you're not supposed to roll. If you wear a tie to this, if you wear a suit to this floor, basically everyone's going to be like, oh I'm, oh, oh, I'm sorry, did someone pass away? It's like either going to a wedding, funeral, or you have a court case. Hopefully not the, the last one. Yes. Um, I'm, kind of, uh, I'm kind of holding on to this, uh, this, this uh, long here, 189. I did kind of add, not at the best places here, but uh, with the market kind of pushing up, let's see how far we can get. I don't know if we're going to get that 190 right away, but I'm going to try to stay on my feet as best as possible here. Um, again, just it's like teetering in and around uh, my entry, so I do have to stay as nimble as possible. But again, the first sign of a little bit of a bid, they're quite, uh, quite aggressive uh, to the upside, and we did get right into 189. So let's see how far we can get with this one. 
on the Tesla. Uh, definitely a little charged up, as uh, as Neil uh, Neil mentioned earlier there. But uh, other other names kind of uh, taking a bit of a pullback uh, here. Google, one of the ones that isn't really doing that, Neil. So uh, that's uh, I'm happy you're still in that long. It that was thing is just, still going wild. It went like 10 cents in the money. Now it's like right back to flat. But how about we declare victory for VKTX? Nothing? It's Viking Therapeutics. Ah, uh, yes. Viking, Viking Therapeutics, victory. I mean, yeah, see, Sean would have got Because there were warriors? No, it's fine. Um, you ever watch the Entourage? No, I haven't. Okay, that's. If you've never seen Entourage, you wouldn't get it. There's a guy. Anyway, there's a guy from Entourage, and like his character is like he's a, he was a former actor, and the only thing he did good was a show called Viking Quest. Okay. And he had one line where he just say victory, so that was <laughs> kind of his thing. Okay. I'm educating the youth uh, as well Thank as you. Uh, trying to trade. John, I, got, I got such a long list of shows and movies to watch, Neil. I don't know if I'm going to finish them in this lifetime. It's absolutely wild. You know. You're young. You're not relatively. Married. I mean, what are we talking about here? Don't complain about Married to the market, Neil. Uh, Johnny know. Drama, baby. That's what it's all about. Three o'clock sell-off. Not yet. I only have arm short. I really hope that's not the case because I just dip bought Intel in front of this level right here. Uh, if we can come to my chart. Ram, ram, the chart, chart, before it stops out because I want people to see it before it stops out. Um, if we can hold the higher low on Intel, I have dip bought in front of this. Super strong name, at least for now, but it's not a guarantee. Like The thing I like short is arm. And the thing I got out of short into a long in this little consolidation breakout is uh, Google. But the more I look at it, no, man, Google is rejecting this. Let's tighten the stop up on Google because when you zoom it back out, that's the opening range high, and we just wicked it. I think this might need to take out the opening range high, or it should be going long off VWAP instead. So I'm just going to tighten the stop up. I don't want to risk that much on that Google trade anymore. Uh, Rivian is at 11. Okay, so again, this is the opening range top, right at $11. Hmm. Where's your Tesla? Because I'm thinking, why wouldn't this be a bit of a short here at 11.10 or 11.05? So I thought, I th uh, at what, Tesla at 11? No, Rivian, oh, Rivian. is back up to okay, the opening yeah, no, no, no. range. So I did kind of get out because we pushed right back into that 189, and then we, we kind of grabbed it right away. So I was like, oh, no, no, uh, I'm getting right back in. So uh, I did get right back in a little bit there. Let's see how well this kind of works. I'm looking for that 190 to come in. We did hold that 189 uh, a little bit. But uh, again, like I said, got to stay as nimble as possible here. Let's see if the move comes, in, comes into fruition. We are in power hour now. So we are printing the last hourly candle on the day. And uh, yeah, so with, like I said before, every 30 minute candle being a little bit red, take a quick look at this right here, we're printing some of the first green candles on the day. So let's see if this is a little bit of a relief rally that, uh, that Neil was talking about, or it could just be nothing. I am kind of uh, chasing some of these highs here. OB be nimble, OB be quick. OB jumps over the Tesla stick. I, where is that from? Is that like a... It's like a nur nursery Jack, rhyme, Jack right? Nimble, yeah. Jack, yeah, just nursery yeah, Jack be nimble, okay. Jack be quick, Jack jumps over the... Yeah, well, you, you know what it is. But the, I just realized I did the Viking thing and I didn't actually pull up Viking Therapeutics. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's not a stock okay. that I trade or, or that I think any of us have traded. Uh, so long story short, uh, weight loss drugs. These, it's been said, I'm not a doctor, but it's been said that um, their offering might actually be comparable, if not better, to what's going on with Eli, Eli Lilly and Novo. And you've got a triple top up here at the 95 level today. However, I know it would be easy to say, let's look... Oh, one, two, break out the top, go long at 95. I have a rule about breakouts in the prior resist, in overhead resistance, and that's a breakout into overhead resistance. But that's not till 99 bucks. What you can do, however, is look for a dip buy. And that might lead you back into its breakout price, which is what I should have done with Google instead of taking a, a secondary break. So like maybe back into like 91 and 91 and a half, if it catches a bid there, I think you could have a little something uh, for VKTX. Good volume spike just, I mean, it just did a big volume spike. So if it can hold uh, that breakout price, might be worth a little something. Although I just realized there might have been a little, maybe there was news that just happened on VKTX, which I'm not aware of. I'm just going to make sure I look that up uh, just in case there's something that just hit the wire. You never want to be trading blind. That's what it's all about.
Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I, I am kind of uh, watching this very closely here. We're watching a little bit of that 189. Uh, yeah, the futures are coming right back in, but we dipped below the 189, and it seems like we are holding uh, a little bit of the a little bit of the trend here as uh, the dips keep on getting kind of bought up. Uh, I, again, I don't know what's I don't know what's really going on, but on a name that's been selling off all day, uh, it seems like as of right now, it do, it is kind of. Uh, uh, Potentially turning, I have here. Um, I think this is an this is a nine uh, nine or an eight EMA right here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, again, just a, just a quick indicator, kind of uh, showing a little bit of trend there. And uh, we are holding some of these lows every time we do dip back in. Uh, again, like I said, I have no idea where this is going to go, but if it's showing me that uh, it wants to kind of bid, I do want to respect that a little bit for the reversion. Again, uh, we're looking for that VWAP in and around that 191. Will we get there? Nobody knows. Oh, wait, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody knows, but uh, I, I know I definitely don't know. I'm just trying to uh, trying to assess probabilities and uh, potentially kind of uh, how, how, how would you say, how would you say yeah take I mean, take shots on what I think are decent probability things. But that's then again, all trading is. Yeah, there's no certainties in trading. Well, all you're doing is looking for anything that anything that sets up as a positive expectancy for you as a trader. You're just kind of supposed to do it. So if you have a certain strategy, like example, reversal, or pullback into VWAP for resistance or whatever it might be, um, with the trend, I'll just, I'm saying that because uh, just quickly, like just arm, like you know, weak stock, pull back off of uh, VWAP and look for the trend to continue, like look to short the humps, I guess just a strategy. And if it works, you keep doing it. And if it doesn't work, you stop doing it and you reassess. But one thing we will never stop doing on a Monday, at least as long as we're around, is going to Danielle Shea, who is going to save Tesla for all of us. Fast and often, Ms. Shea. Hi, how are you? Happy Monday. Good, how are you guys? Good, it's, it's a busy one, obviously. Lots to uh, talk about here. I was going to say, we're getting to the end, essentially, of uh, major earnings anyways, when, it's, uh, when we talk about earnings season overall. But um, a few interesting names coming up. Do you want to talk about this move first off in Tesla before we get into uh, what's going to come in earnings land this week? Sure. And I have a couple other swing trades for you, too. Um, you know, looking at Tesla, I mean, here's the thing, and I'm sure the uh, Fibonacci princess would tell you the same, but this is rallied right into critical resistance and it's rolling over from here. I've got a daily squeeze. This is consolidation and that consolidation normally breaks out in the direction of the trend and that trend is down. So, you know, we're down pretty heavy today. I mean, I know people always want to try to buy Tesla when it's down, but I mean, for me, this is a larger setup, a swing setup, and it's a bearish setup. So I think that because it's hit this area of resistance at 205 and it's failed, um, to me, that would bring it down into 180. Yeah, below moving averages, below any kind of uh, support at this point for Tesla. It doesn't look good coming off this. Uh, I mean, it was Chinese delivery data that we got this morning that uh, was worse than expected. So, yeah, not a good look. Um, are the swing ideas related to earnings? Maybe a better question. You know, these are just kind of random momentum setups that I have. They're they're a little bit, we I like to call them honey badgers. It's because they're the stocks that are kind of moving by themselves and they're not really going with the market. Um, one of them is going to be DKNG. So if you check out this one, this one has a, you know, fantastic cup and handle pattern. It has that daily squeeze. It's pulled back into the 34 EMA. And you see how it's just right up near that previous high. I mean, these kind of stocks, especially when it's up three and a half percent, I mean, they can just they can really break out to the upside. So I'm trading this one with some long calls. I also have a butterfly on it. Uh, but, you know, I think this is really good for day traders, especially because of this momentum on the lower time frame charts. It's interesting the the rotation we're seeing out of some, you know, older more established tech and into names like DraftKings, for example. Uh, interesting look as far as what is to come on the earnings board this week. I mean, um, there's CrowdStrike, there's more retail with JWN coming through, there's JD.com, Billy Billy, some of the Chinese names. Uh, talk about Broadcom maybe to kick things off, AVGO, um, with so much attention around the semiconductor space, uh, hard to avoid uh, Broadcom. 
So I love ABGO. Um, this is one of these stocks that I look at and, you know, I was buying shares in it and I was holding shares in it. And there was a couple different times last year where I thought, man, it's just gone too far. I don't want to buy any more shares and it just keeps going. So this is like the gift that give, keeps on giving. Uh, with this stock, you know, it's rallied really strong going into the earnings report and now it's $1,400 stock. You can see with this grid down here, this is the implied volatility. So when you're trading options and you see the implied volatility spike like this, what this means is that you're generally going to be able to sell premium over the earnings report. Now, with something like ABGO, since it's such a high price name, um, if you want to sell calls and puts with some protection, you're going to have to do it pretty wide. But I do think that that's a pretty good option with this stock because, you know, what's interesting about it is that it's so popular. Everybody's looking at it. It's moved so much. But if you look at these earnings reports, last quarter, it only gapped by 0.6. The quarter before that, 2.3. Quarter before that, 0.1. 3.2, 3.7. So the moves over earnings actually what, aren't what? that big. So that's why you can sell premium on it for the most part. All right. Uh, a few other interesting names coming up this week. As I mentioned, some of the Chinese ADRs have been a disaster going back to, you know, even the beginning of last year, never mind this year. But um, we get JD.com, we get Billy Billy. We've already had some of the bigger names in Alibaba in the Baidu's of the world. But uh, any thoughts here? Uh, I mean, if you looked at uh, JD.com or Billy Billy? Sure, we can look at those. So for those, I generally like to sell the premium on them as well, but they are also in kind of a bearish downtrend. So with JD, um, looking at this one, I mean, you can see the way that it's underneath critical resistance uh, right around the $25 price point. There's also more resistance at 25. There's more resistance at 30. And you see how there's a squeeze. So this series of green dots has shifted to red and then shifted to white. So that just means that there's a lot of energy in there. And because it's a bearish name, I would bet on it to the downside. I will say that, you know, last quarter it did gap up 6.8%. So that does give me a, a little bit of a pause. So sometimes it might be better to wait until after the earnings report and short it at these resistance zones. But let me see what the expected move on this thing is. Um, Looks like the expected move is $1.83. So as long as, you know, let's say, for example, it gaps up $1.83 or less, that would be a sign that you could short it after the report in the direction of the trend. And this implied volatility is really high. So that gives you an opportunity to sell some premium as well in the options market. Coming up even after the close tonight, GTLB going to be on a lot of traders' minds, not even, or not only tonight, but uh, tomorrow morning as well. Tell us about GitLab. So this one actually looks fantastic. I hadn't looked at this chart yet, but oh my gosh, I like it a lot. And you know why? So you can see that last quarter it gapped up 12.8%, quarter before that 4.8%, quarter before that 28%. So you have three quarters in a row where you have a really nice trend um, post earnings moves. You have a bit of a cup and handle pattern here. You're also right near that previous high. You have a squeeze, you have high implied volatility. So this is the kind of setup that I would look at it to the long side. Now, obviously, you know, with any stock, um, anything can happen over earnings, but this is definitely a bullish pattern for me. And let me see what, if there's any short interest. I love checking for short interest on um, these kind of names because when you have a bullish pattern and you have short interest, that that's very positive. It looks like it's only 4.5% short float. So not that great, but still, let me see, give you a price target on this. About $85 a share. See the expected move too. $13 yep. expected move. Nice. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, I, I noticed that this morning as well and, and thought the same thing. I mean, I mean, there's a ton more here. Anything else catching your eye maybe uh, going into the rest of the week here? So, you know, what's crazy is I've been trading IBM um, and I can't even remember the last time I traded IBM, but one of the traders in our trading room pointed it out and this thing is flying. So, um, I'm long this one right now. You know, you've got some really nice volume, nice momentum move in here. You can see that there's a key psychological value, which tends to act as a bit of a magnet, especially when it's just above that previous high. So 
I'm trading IBM uh, to this $200 strike. And then I'm also trading Microsoft right now. So I basically have Microsoft, DKNG, IBM. Um, these are the ones that I'm focused on. I'm definitely going to be trading more earnings reports later in the week. Um, but, you know, these right now are basically my top three swing setups. So, you know, Microsoft up into 420, IBM up into 200, and then DKNG up to about 45 and maybe even 50. Yeah, it's it's interesting to see the the separation that we're seeing today with, I mean, Apple down huge, Google down huge, Tesla down huge, and then you have IBM moving higher on volume as well. It's been a long time, as you said, since we've looked at that, but uh, great stuff as always. Daniel Shea, check her out on X, guys. Address at the bottom there. We'll uh, catch up with you again later in the week. Thank you. Thank you very you. much there, Danielle. And uh, wow, wow, we wow, IBM, what that could be doing. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but if you pull up a weekly chart of IBM, oh boy, to steal a line wow. from Obi. Oh boy. Wow. That doesn't look that doesn't look too bad at all. So if you're sick, I was just checking out GitLab because uh, they're, they're they're the big one reporting aftermarket tonight. I think in terms of volatility, you know, we're going to be watching this one. And uh, just because Sean's not here, doesn't matter. Uh, we got Michael Noss. We got the trade review. We'll take some questions. It's going to be just like normal. You got some earnings aftermarket. You have a big one before the bell. I believe it's like Neo before the bell. You got some target this week. There's a lot uh, to get to, but GitLab is the one aftermarket uh, that I think is the most, I mean, the expected move on GitLab was like 21%. 21%. I say that with a chuckle, but it's actually true. So that could be a wild one. A couple of things as we were... Uh, with Danielle, the market tried to get back to the upside. It has been going from green to red to green to red, back and forth on the NASDAQ probably five or six times. Uh, Google's going sideways. One more entry. I'm going to try and buy the dip 133.4. Uh, Apple's holding on to 175 and a quarter. Intel actually is threatening a break imminently. So this 46.20 level, if it can't hold on to that, I think you'll work back into 46. It's Intel. That 20 cents matters on Intel because it usually has like a 20, 30 cent range in the afternoons. So I'm not going to hold this down into the 46 level. It's one thing when stocks can move a buck and you give them 30 cents. But if, if I'm looking for 20, 30 cents on a move, then I'm not holding it 20, 20 cents against me uh, there on Intel. So we have to get out. Well, I'm going to get out of it. But Di Frank Jones, Frank Jones. Disney, Disney, Disney. Disney broke 113 today, and it failed the 113 break. So it broke 113, came back underneath, and looked like it was failing it. Look what happened at the middle of the day. Held on to 113, and has been running ever since. Just got to 14s. Why does 113 matter? Because of this. I did tweet this picture out and said, hey, buying above 113, Disney. I didn't do it. Got distracted by what was going on at Chipland. But all of a sudden... You can ruin Star Wars all you want, but people like what they see since earnings on Disney, and it is breaking out. I think you look long in this bad boy as long as it's above the 13 level, whether that's dips tonight or probably tomorrow morning, I think that could be key. No, it's not your mistake, Frank. It's not, I don't mind going over things. Look, I'll talk about any stock. Wins, losses, missed opportunities. You've got to be able to do it. Like I'd be going over this one myself on the train ride home and ask myself why I didn't listen to my iPad. Uh, figuratively, the iPad doesn't actually talk to me. I'm sure I can set up alerts on it, but I'm not going to. I have one short, and it's holding in the money. The good news here for ARM is, you know, it's bouncing off this 140. As the market went up, it's holding the lower high. So I think the 139 is going to make a lot of sense. If it gets down to 139, I get out of this trade. Take the profit and run. Uh, Val, Val in the chat, we'll go over Stitch Fix for sure. They report after the bell. I think it's, they're the second largest implied move. 16% uh, on Stitch Fix. Don't know exactly what time, hit enter twice. Um, but it's been going a little bit sideways today. I'm not really seeing much of a trade. All that, so right now I'm not seeing a trade is what I should say. But with an implied volatility of 16%, and the levels that it's at, like look at the hold at about $3.10 here. So if you slap 16% on that, you very easily get to the 350 level for a potential test of a breakout level. Or if you end up to the downside, well, that's right into the, it kind of takes you right into a double bottom, 52-week low. So this is going to test very likely some pretty key levels in the aftermarket on Stitch Fix. 
It's not doing anything right now. You can see it barcoding, so I don't think there's much of a trade until we get the early earnings print after the bell. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I guess I'm being a little patient here with, uh, with this Tesla move there, uh, Neil. And uh, like I said before, kind of uh, holding on to trend, pushing, slowly making its way back up into 190. Will we get there? I don't know, but it is kind of holding up as, uh, as distinctly different kind of action than it was doing a little earlier there. But again, we came all the way into 189 and some change. So I am watching it pretty closely. I did kind of chase up into it. Why don't I still have inventory from 187? I have no idea. I should be holding that for the push through 190. But again, it's a work in progress. I do got to get better. Uh, I do have to get better at, uh, at that, kind of, uh, that kind of mindset kind of trading there but uh, again it's a work in progress as we come right back into this uh into this 189 i do want to keep an eye a close eye on it there it's got a i will get out of that one okay thank you um but uh, yeah no a little aggressive to the downside sure we could rebid right away but uh i didn't really like that uh i didn't really like that kind of uh push and wipe back down but again I, could, I, I can like and not like a lot of the different things. The market's still going to do what the market's going to do, right? It's I'm funny how that make, works, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, a, it, it's just, a, I, I, at the end of the day, what I'm realizing is I have to respect the market and uh, moreover respect myself and my own plan. And uh, that's what we were talking about today. And uh, Neil was talking about today as well on, uh, on the... Uh, the, uh, trade, the, lesson was the, le the lesson with Neil, right? Yeah, the daily lesson with Neil, yes. Market doesn't care. Go back to square one. So as I said, actually Apple might actually come out before Intel, I think. Apple working about 40 cents against. It's giving it about 50 pennies on Apple. Uh, Intel's just holding the bid for now. I keep thinking this is going to break first. But really, it could just be Apple. So it came in, consolidated sideways. Looks like 75 might not hold. We'll see. It did a wick bottom off the 75 level. Uh, can it hold it is going to be the big question. I thought Intel was going to stop out first. I should have more than one short. I didn't find a setup that I loved outside of ARM. Like, there should have been something else. No question about it. I was thinking I was probably a little bit bullish on Softy. That's actually holding 415. So I'm not really seeing anything that I'm in love with. Amazon. Amazon's weak, but I don't see a short setup for Amazon. I suppose 170, 178.40, although I have no other reason other than the local, like this local level here to be shorted. Because it's actually above the previous close. Like I'd be shorting it 20 cents above the previous close. It's a weak name, no question about it. That's uh, not sure about it. Jamlocity, what do I think of DoorDash? It was um, Lyft and DoorDash got the, double, got the upgrades today. It was like the same firm decided to upgrade them both. My first note is I prefer Uber to DoorDash if I'm kind of, if I'm in that space. I own, I own Uber uh, shares in my personal account. And I think if you own one, you probably don't care about the other. That said, it's going. It got the upgrade and decided to continue and break out the highs uh, on DoorDash. Uh, it, whether or not it's going to continue to hold, it didn't really present you with that a really good dip into uh, previous highs. Like there was, this is a dark pool like at 8 o'clock. At the open, it didn't give you anything back into 130. So holding strength most of the day on a breakout in DoorDash. The volume's good. I'd say the volume's more good than great. As you can see here, it's not really standing out. So my preference is, is Uber. All that said, Uber is not breaking out right now. DoorDash is. So credit to DoorDash. Although, you know what? Obi, looking at, what do you think I'm about to write on my iPad right now? Um, 82 resistance? Something about 82. Well, just Uber and 82. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. It's yeah. already there. Oh. It's already on the iPad. Yeah. So throw that away. But uh, that looks like, a, I mean, look at the resistance at this daily chart on Uber. It just wicked it again today at the open. So there's your failure of the 82 level. That could even be a breakout tomorrow. But uh, here comes Intel. Both Intel and Apple, I think, are going to come out uh, imminently. Intel probably first. Do this for because I have a tight, I have a tighter stop on Intel, so that probably comes out first. Google is holding higher. I'm going to apologize for the wicks here, but it's trying to work into this 134. It is going so slowly into this level that I do wonder if it's just going to be like a 30, 40 cent trade. It gets very, very slowly moving up here in Alphabet. So this market move that looked like it was accelerating higher is definitely losing a little bit of steam. 
Yeah, so uh, I kind of, uh, like I said, I didn't really like that, that punch out, Neil, but take a look at this. I got right back in as it came right to the top. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to chase as well with that kind of action, the rip right back up that we had. I was like, oh boy, did we trap some shorts there? I really liked the sell, and uh, I'm sure I wasn't the only one that, uh, that might have liked the sell. And if we rebid right away instantly like that, right back into 190, I kind of like that. Let's see how well uh, this kind of goes. I have no idea, like I said before, but uh, if it's gonna show me some buying pressure, uh, let's see how far we can get through that 190. Again, VWAP uh, in and around, uh, where am I looking at? VWAP 191.15 it would seem. So we still got a couple points to go to on, on Tesla. Again, a name that's been sold off pretty much all day. Uh, let's see how much umph this has. With only about, uh, what is it, 35, 36 minutes left in the trading day here. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's see how much of a percent reversion we've had so far. Uh, just taking a quick look at it, it's not even 50% just yet um, right there. So let's take a quick measurement. The high a day in and around just underneath that 200, the low a day. So it's about 12, uh, let's give it 13 points, right? So we're looking for about six and a half back to the upside here. So let's take a quick, what is six and a half? Six and a half will give us about 93. 193 for a 50% reversion, and that's above VWAP. So I think uh, I think VWAP might not uh, might not be um, too too far. But again, let's see. Here comes in the 190 with 150 lots on the ask. There, oh boy, there that 187. That was definitely some trouble. The informal oh boy count. I'm just gonna <laughs> say it's. I last time we were on together, I think you hit 12 or 13 on the day. I think you've done it like seven times, maybe. Oh, the, oh, the old boy? How many times yeah. do you say old oh boy? I said I it. I have no idea. Whenever the market is a, is a little, uh, oh little surprising and it's just like, oh, wow, oh boy, here we I, go. I want to get to uh, thank you for the super chat here first, uh, Chase. Chase bans. Yeah, why not? Uh, can you please take a look at ET, energy transfer, ET, for me? Uh, I'll, call, I'll say energy transfer because I don't want people to, I'm a sci-fi guy. I don't want people to actually think I'm looking for ET. ET, yeah. <laughs> that you know, ET you know. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, it's, it's a bigger deal. But um, these guys reported... Actually, I don't remember watching the movie because I was really, really young when I watched it and I don't remember what happens. I just know this alien's trying to get home. I so, mean, that's basically that's the That's basically, yeah. It's literally like, the, the entire movie. Yeah. But uh, energy transfer... Real, okay. Never seen E.T. Um, energy transfer reported on, on Valentine's Day. That was, a good, that was a good story for them. This is a very... I, what was I just talking about that was failing a break? It was Uber. Uber at 82, double top here as well. So post earnings run uh, on the 14th. So that would have been like earnings and then swoop to the upside, double top trying to break it. Your problem is, as I just said, you just failed the double top at 15. So I don't know, it remains to be seen what happens next. I mean, I couldn't, I can't tell you. Uh, I, like I generally, I, what I like in a situation like this is okay, well, last time it failed, it found resistance at 1480. It broke out from there on Friday. Can it hold on to 1480? And technically, if it holds on to 1480, I think it has a good chance higher low into a breakout on energy transfer. It's a good move since earnings. I got to concern myself with uh, ARM here. I mean, Apple will do whatever the heck it does, which is now it's holding 35. So it's basically out 20 cents and not going higher. But ARM's starting to break down with 30 minutes to go. I think I, I might move the target if we're tight to 350 and this market isn't taking out the tops. But for now, I want to just take the $1.75, two bucks if we can get it. Um, Google, I put an offer in front of 134. I'm going to take it out if it gets to that price. And I was looking for a little something else, but uh, like I know there's a few other names that are going. It was that BBAI earlier oh, yeah. today, Big Bear. If it wasn't 330, uh, you know what, but it, it is too late. Like this just wicked under VWAP. A lot of times you can get that, okay, just failed VWAP, but the support's been here at 440. If it can find a way to get back above, take a local breakout that might have stopped some people out or trailed some people out. But the volume's not really there for it. I'm not sure we have enough time for it to make that move. But it is on the, it is on the watch, as was Mara. Remember we said Mara made, that, uh, Mara made that rejection candle? Wow, it's still going. Now it's holding 26. Okay, look at this. So rejection candle, reversal, and then you just did a dip, failing 26 and immediately back above. All right, this is a party worth joining to 26. So I'm going to wet proverbial beak in Mara, if I can get it, and am I even going to get this fill? 
and then give it to the 26 even level. So if I get it, I get it. I don't want to chase past the quarters. If you look at the risk to reward, I mean, this level here is like 2660. So if I chase past the quarters, the risk to reward doesn't really uh, work that well. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, we finally broke through 190. Uh, I got a little jittered out. Um, a bit of a bit of a trepidation at that 190. I'm just like, okay, well, I don't know what to do here, and uh, I kind of punch out a little bit there. And uh, okay, so we'll see. Trepidation. Yeah, it was just a little, uh, you know, just a little uh, jittery there. Um, and uh, so. Don't be scared. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I got to be wary. I know I'm punching the highs there, so I don't want to necessarily get involved uh, too hard and too heavy uh, on something now that is near the highs. There, down. there it it's goes. It is coming down a little bit there. Down. Yeah, so um, we, we did get a bit of a flush there, if you guys are watching. Arm, oh boy, that uh, 141, a little bit of a double top underneath, uh, underneath uh, VWAP, also this morning consolidation. Looking a little bit uh, like some shoulders and some, uh, some, uh, some head and shoulders here, uh, potentially, kind of. Uh, I'm not really one to kind of uh, uh, name the chart patterns, but again, it's just price action. You, you, you reject the level, you attempt to break through it, can't really get past it, you try it again and then fail. So that's, that's, that's a little bit of confirmation kind of uh, behind that head and shoulders. But again, underneath the VWAP, looking kind of weak there. Let's see what we do with that 140. Definitely an interesting area on the arm. Uh, again, doing some heavy lifting over the past few, uh, past couple of weeks there. It's through getting that shot in the arm? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, we, we tried to get through 150. That definitely got, uh, got a little bit of a shot <laughs> in the arm there. And uh, we've been looking a little, little weak since then. But let's see. Let's see what we do with that 150. I know a lot of people are waiting for that 150, including myself. Uh, if, we, if we even get there, who knows? But with uh, some of these AI names, again, SMCI, um, NVIDIA, and there was another one. I think it was like an AV something. AVGO. Uh, AV, no, uh, it was a What's different a AI on? name, AVL something. Uh, I know I wrote it down somewhere here, but uh, another another kind of uh, uh, AI ticker in and around that 800 mark. Uh, let me know in the chat if you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm forgetting what the what the ticker is exactly, but uh, yeah. So a lot of these uh, AI names kind of pushing towards their highs, breaking through that 1K mark, and uh, ARM still holding that one, uh, 140, 139 uh, level as of right now. So let's see where we, where we go from there. Uh, again, we talked about like, uh, the, the, the kind of volume that came in off, the, uh, off, of, uh, off of earnings. Oh, ASML, then, you're thinking about. Yes, ASML, that's the one. You don't want to trade them in the afternoon because they're an Amsterdam stock. Okay. So like no, I, I know they're AI related yeah, and they're in and around that same price uh, price point. Well, it's a thousand US. What is it? No, but I think if you trade it in Amsterdam, it's like 900 in the Amsterdam market. Think of them like you would think of, uh, they're, they're not dissimilar from ARM in some ways. Uh, they're also pretty similar to like an AMAT or a LAM. Think of them like LAM. Okay. Basically, if you make high-end chips, they have like this uh, lithography machine that like basically everybody has to use. So they have a little bit of like a mini monopoly in the chip space, ASML. I love the company. Uh, let's go to, oh, nice. Uh, Mara is starting to go up, to the, up in the money. So a good time to go to Adara at the desk. Kind of. Brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real time scanning and alerting used on our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. And see, what you don't know is if you check out that link and go Trader TV 20, get yourself a discount, um, you'll also get a, a tiger uh, as well. So you can be a little bit like uh, Mike Tyson. Tiger not included. <laughs> you, know what, you know what always bugs me about that? Like, first of all, everyone's always like, okay, well, you're, you, you get like X amount of you know what money, F you money, and you, you do things like buy a tiger. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard of, man. Because I don't care what you do, it's still a tiger. Yeah. Like you can't, I don't care how much you train it, I don't care how nice you've been to it, or maybe you've had it since it was a like, little kid. No, it's a tiger, and someday, you're not going to see me in a safari. Like, that's I mean, definitely, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think that, do you feel like that's kind of... Uh, um, it kind of plays on the ego in a sense, I feel, oh, I think where it's like, sure. you know, I, like, I got a tiger. Oh, yeah, you got a, you got a cat? I mean, I, I'm Ram Ram just cat, said it's so, her right? pet. Yeah. Ram Ram's like, that's my pet. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, it's your pet, Ram Ram. We'll see what's up. Yeah. If, uh, we go to the, we'll go to the zoo, and when there's a cage between, when there's like a cage between you and the yeah. tiger, you're still going to freak out. You didn't pet no, 
She's saying she pets tigers. Okay. Hey, more power to you. I'll trade stocks. That's enough risk for me. Um, no, I'm not petting a tiger. Nice. I'm, not, I'm not going on a safari. Um, I like roller coasters are fine. They're safe as all hell. I'm one of those types of people, man. I love life. Life is so good. I mean, like, life is amazing. Yes. No, it really is. Like, it's great. Like, there's so many great experiences you can have in life. Yeah. Why would you uh, stop so. out with a tiger? No, it's a right? tiger. You can, yeah, you can't. Like, it's, a... it's, the, it's the equivalent of, like, imagine, imagine a scenario where, okay, like, uh, you could short um, SMCI as it's going absolutely crazy, yeah. or you could short Tesla today. Now, if you get a top on SMCI, you're going to have all the bragging rights. You're going to, your chest ball puffed out and whatnot. So that's, that's what, like, having a tiger is like. Or you can just get a nice normal pet that is going to keep you happy and is yeah. going to love you and is never going to want to kill you and eat you for its lunch or dinner. I'm just throwing it out there to each throw. It would um, seem that like being they said, turned on the algos again. The cell one? The cell one. Look at, look at the futures. I mean, coming right back into the low, lower end of the range. See, this is okay. Absolutely. I'm, look at that. Boom. Boom. First, I'm going to apologize for the Hands wicks off. on my Apple chart because it's going to make this really difficult to, uh, to suss out here. But uh, Apple tried to break back out to the top all of a sudden, the selling came in. I'm like, okay, we'll dump some at break even because it's not going. And then it broke down here. So I, I just covered some as it can, tries to hold on to 175. The good news is Mara started going after we got into that off the teens, but it just reversed at the 40 level. So even Mara started to pull back in. Google is a reload that is still okay because I got some out in front of the top and then reloaded it off the 40. But if it can't hold on to these 40s, that's this local high here. I'm dumping Alphabet as well. And of course, as I said, I have one bloody short, one short, should have had one or two. NVIDIA could have been one, but I didn't love the setup on NVIDIA. Arm now down at the 139. So if I ever talk about things like have relatively tight stops, fair enough, but then let the winners ride. Like this is sort of what I'm getting at. Uh, Google, tight stop, just reloaded, it couldn't hold 34. Again, I apologize for the scaling. This wick in here is kind of screwing things up. Uh, but ARM is now churning into the downside as I type A twice. And the reason for ARM short is simple. A, it's down when the market was up. B, it was putting in lower highs. And most importantly, this 142, when it rejected 142, you guys remember this. If you watch the show in the afternoon on Friday, Arm 142. It rolled over and I missed the trade. Rewind the tape. I was talking about Arm 142 and I still managed to miss out on all of the goodness. I think I got a little bit of it, but not all of the goodness that the 142 short was. So when it broke that and I didn't get it, I was looking for shorts the rest of the time here. It is working, but only for a little bit. BTC is continuing to crack high a day. Good, because I'm long Mara. But unfortunately for Mara, it is not participating with this move. So just remember, Mara is relatively weak, but it put a rejection candle in, pointed out by you guys in the chat, and I just kind of liked it when it did this little dip, immediately regained the $26 level, so I went long in front of it. Uh, Kevin Mendoza, my thoughts on New York City Bancorp. Stocks like this, until it makes a bottom, I'm not going to anticipate it. It's down another 20%. I know, like, there's some, look, there's a, they had a new CEO, the CEO was like, they made an acquisition in the, the bank that they acquired. Like that CEO is now taking over the company. So there's talk of maybe rebranding it. Um, there, is, there are some positives that that CEO, the incoming CEO was talking about. I'm not going to sit here and wax poetic fundamentally about it because I don't know. But what I can tell you is allow the stocks to make a bottom before you start hunting at them. Since the bad earnings, this is yet to make a convincing bottom. It had just done it on Friday. And what's the next thing that happened? It took it out. Bye-bye, just took out that fresh bottom today. So it is trying to find a low. And until that happens, the short till it's not as a trader. I don't care. I don't, it, just, it is what it is. If this had held at 350 today, no problems. Like if it could have held this higher low, I think that would have been a breakout long for sure. Maybe even a breakout at $4. But this is just still trying to find its bottom. As we're going to look to see what else is going on at the big screen with Adair. We're going to take a look at some other movers in the S&P 500 making big moves that maybe we haven't discussed or discussed as much as we head into close today, including uh, this move on Dominion Energy. 
D is the ticker for this one. This is the second time we discussed this one last week. Massive move to the downside after a business meeting uh, with regards to some restructuring and lower guidance. Now uh, we actually have, despite some price target decreases from both Scotiabank and Guggenheim, Dominion recovering to the upside almost 5% today. Next up, we have uh, Packaging Corp, PKG, up about 3% after getting an upgrade to a buy rating from BVA Securities. And last but not least, this one mentioned a little bit earlier, but Ford up over 2% after reporting a 10.5% increase in February U.S. sales. So nice look here as well for F, guys. Yeah, it's like a, those are great prices. A work in progress. Oh, we're just going over ARM, and I'll show you just come to my chart for a second because I was talking to Obi about like I was taking shots at it because once it failed 142, I knew I liked the short, right? Like it's and this is the short that I didn't capitalize on on Friday. As it came back in, like I know I want the short. It's like okay, take that short, give it like with ARM. I'm, I don't want to wick it out at the previous high. I want to give it a little bit more room. So I give it a little bit more room. It doesn't work. I short it again, give it a little bit more room, it doesn't work. But neither one of those are on the back end of the trade. Like it, this one's a little bit on the back end. That's a little bit better than the first entry. But this is a much better entry. Now you have a double top, and you've got it failing off that double top. This is the entry that you want as a trader. When we talk about pack your patience, it's being willing to not have it here so that you can have it here and you can have it for more. Because then you've got more capital to spend if you haven't lost on it a couple of times. Although you, maybe you don't care. If you're a day trader, you might not care. But other traders might care about that. They might have less bullets by the time it gets to this. I'm going to trail this uh, through 120, 139 and a quarter. Mostly because it's 340 and we are running out of time. Like it is, you know, I'm going to have to get up to the desk to prep. Uh, for the uh, for the aftermarket show, which we're going to talk about some earnings. We got Michael Noss coming on as, as as usual in the market recap, but I'll have to get to the desk to prepare, make sure stuff is logged in. I was doing as much as I can, but uh, it's been a while since I filled in for Sean. Sean doesn't take a lot of time off, but it's a very important. I mean, look, I mean, Sean is definitely taking time off today for the best reasons, getting those extra seventy four. Uh, smoke alarms uh, de uh, detectors in his house is important. And if you listen to the podcast, you know that he clearly did not have enough in his house. And like it was, it's a weird thing, but trust me, when you listen to it, like there was a lot of great content on there. But I was just completely hung up on the conversation uh, with. with <laughs> yeah, I know you guys were too. Like uh, you guys were talking about it, but like how many how many fire alarms can you have? Not fire alarm, but like smoke detectors can you have in your house? Gotta be safe. You can never be too safe when you have kids, though. You'll understand that. You'll understand that one day. Uh, Fabian just said, "How safe can you be?" I'm like, "Trust me." You get. It's weird. You get overly protective. You don't want to be that parent, but like the risk, like the, the things that you comes out the things that you can do, just to be like you know reasonably safe. You do them all, right. and you don't realize like how obsessed you are with it until you take a step back. It's like, oh yeah, I wonder if my parents were that way. Like you try to give them room and stuff, but like. I'm a big, like CO2 detectors, oh man, my buddy had a, yeah, yeah, yeah. my friend had one experience with when that, it set off and like the fire department was like, oh my goodness, it's a good thing you got out of that house. Right. And so I, I take that stuff very, very seriously. Uh, you can't mess around. So trail out on ARM and we'll see what happens with this Mara. I mean, it, I got the first 15 cents and now it looks like it's just going to fail. So I'm going to tighten my stop up here too. What is up with this, uh, this market there, Neil? Look at that. We saw the Kuadunk on the futures over here. And then take a look at that rip right back up. Very strong wick with uh, about two minutes left to, fin to finish printing these 15-minute uh, candles. And look at that. I could probably, I could probably draw, draw a nice trend line in here on, uh, on the ES there as we kind of uh, get bought up every time at a higher low and then uh, comes in and locks it in into the close when you get that strong quadunk off of a break. And then it comes right in. What is this? Uh, 15, 140s-ish. Nice little pop back in with only about a couple of minutes left. Let's see where this goes. It's a good thing I got out of that Tesla uh, because at 190, I guess that's all she wrote there as uh, we kind of pull back uh -oh. into that 189 and uh, coming right back in. So again, right underneath VWAP as well. I was looking for that VWAP to come in and uh, didn't necessarily get all the way to VWAP, but 190 halves, 190s. I think that's pretty close, give or take about a point. It's a, it's an eight, it's a hundred it's a two hundred dollar ticker. I think uh, that's a pretty close test of the VWAP itself. Can you now. full screen that before I get to? I did get out of Mara. I tightened my stop right here, and and the trail got close to hitting on arm, but I'm going to hold that as long as I can. But there's a big difference, and I know you already know this, but 
if you look at that triple bottom, if you're looking for the bottom on Tesla, yeah. like that triple bottom, that's it, man. Yeah. And the I got to hold that. Like, that's, that's a strong reason to hold. But at least you had it. I can't tell you how many traders, and this is one that you watch the show, anyone that watches the show knows this, because Sean has this quality. Um, I don't always have this, I don't have the stick to it. Like, I'll be the, I'll be that guy, you'll see me, like, lose on the stock three times, and then, like, right after that, like, I'm good about getting back in the second time, the third time, but, like, the fourth time, I might not do it. Uh, Sean, if it sets up that third or fourth time, he's taking it. But when it does that triple bottom, you got it. Yeah. Like, you're just like, okay, it wasn't working for me, but this is a different setup, and this is a right. new day. Yeah. Right? Like, those are, like, those are yesterday's prices. As, uh, I don't know, that's another famous line. But uh, there, was, there was a super chat that I want to get to before the imbalances come out. And it was uh, Mr. Westermeyer, uh, shout out to you. Neil, do the Sally challenge and I'll send a new eight ball. I have a question for you, maybe you can clarify. If, can I do like the squats or do I have to do the push-ups like Sharif did? Because I'll tell you right now, I've been trying to bring Sally a push-up challenge on and off for the last couple of years and I can't do it. I can't get through the whole thing. But I'll try. How long of a, of a thing is it? It's, it's, a be, it's over three and a half minutes long. Okay. It works out to 30 push-ups where you're holding at the bottom. It doesn't seem like a lot. Right, but, but it's like, the static hold. Like that that issue, it's right? impossible. Yeah. Like I'm, I don't consider myself, like I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but I'd like to think, you know, I try to stay in shape, and it's like impossible. I will try. We'll figure out a time to do it, but I'd rather be able to do the, I can do the squats, no problem. But, uh, yeah. If you, I don't know that we need a new one, but, um, okay, let's try... Will the ES close green today? Let's see what nonsense this comes up with. Yeah, I see, I can't even say that one. That person is no longer with the show. There's a couple of, it's just like we've had, you know, like Fahad's not here anymore, so. See, now I can't even read it. Oh, what does it say? Very, Very doubtful. doubtful. So now it's getting all bearish on us here. I am short, short of stocks, I should, that's good. But uh, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, it's got a bunch of older, you know, just we need to update it and make it more fluid. Like we could probably throw you in there, um, Adara as well. Like there's all kinds of stuff we should do. So uh, my answer to that, that cool. uh, for you, Mr. Westermeyer, is I'll try it. We'll figure out a time to do it. Just know that I will, I'm, I'm not Sharif, I will embarrass myself, but that's fine. I don't mind embarrassing myself for you guys. And I'll get a good workout in too. I'm, uh, not, I'm, down, to, I'm down to join along if, uh, if uh, these guys are cool with it. You want to do it too? Yeah, I'm down. Let's see. Let's Jeez. see if I can do some 30 static oh, push-ups. Push Let's go. All right. So now, now when I, well, neither one of us is going to do it. But uh, I feel a bit better. Before we go to Adara, just uh, quickly, Rory Allerton, thank you very much as well for the super chat. What's a reverse Quadun called? Quamunk? No, nah, it's just a straight up rip. Just a rip <laughs> is all it is. It's just a rip, rally, whatever you want to call it. Let's go to the desk, Adara. Really quick note here on this Avidel Pharmaceuticals move. We had this big pop into volume uh, just around 3 p.m. here. Basically what happened was earlier in the day, this one was on watch after its earnings, a little bit of a mixed performance here. Then we get around 3.30, um, some news on a patent litigation. So basically it was partially successful. One of the patents was uh, successfully won the other one. Unfortunately, they did lose out to Jazz Pharmaceuticals, but they said that their um, Lumeriz, their narcolepsy drug, should be able to still make it to patients. So there's a statement from AVDL, also worth noting regards to the move in this one, about a 9% short float, 9.9% short float on AVDL, guys. Oh boy. Oh boy. oh boy. Oh boy. When in doubt, zoom out. Uh, AVDL 17. If you, sometimes it is so obvious. And if, come to my chart for a second, Ram Ram. Sometimes it is so obvious. Like if you were long that into that move, 17, 17. It doesn't mean you automatically short at that price. But on flash news, remember what's happening in flash news. When I started trading, it was a little bit different, but it's entirely true now. When some flash news happens, a lot of the move is the absence of the algos making a market. So what the first thing you ask yourself is where are they going to make a market again? Where they're actually going to be the normal bids and asks that cause the stock to hold up for a little bit and, and trade more calmly. And it was at that next point on the daily chart. It was at $17 level. It's a very important thing. So I, I, I never want to buy, like I'd never buy this at like $16.50 on a move like that. You can try to buy a dip on VWAP, those kinds of things, but I never buy into that top. Like 17 might have even looked like a break, but that was a big level on the daily. If we got one minute to the imbalances, all we got is arm. So the, we always talk about learning from your mistakes. And I feel as if 
you know, it was a mistake on arm on Friday not to have done better with the 142 level, and then I did miss it again today. But I'm, I'm now holding for that 138 level. I just realized I was moving my trail and canceled my bid. So I'm looking for that bottom. It's low of the day today on arm. It was flush city. Keep in mind, the moment of reckoning comes for arm next week. Oh, that yeah. would be... Uh, was it Close. next week uh, to, uh, tomorrow? So it's like next week, Tuesday. That is the IPO lockup. And uh, SoftBank, I mean, if they don't sell, I mean, they can do whatever they want to do. What is that? Well, I mean, SoftBank's been around for a while, right? And they, they, they like buy, buy things up over time. What have they done in the past for, with companies that they've uh, bought up? You ever, heard of, uh, you ever heard of WeWork? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so how do, you think that? That? How, do you think, how do you think that turned out for them? Huh. I mean, the answer would be not so well. But no, I mean, they've, look, they've had their wins, they've had their losses. But I think a lot of the reason people think that they'll take some profit is sometimes you want to bank those wins when they come in for you. Um, I just, I always do this at 350 or right in front of 350, I tighten up my trails in case the imbalance comes out against me. And I did just get trailed out at 138.40 uh, on arm. But I'll get to the imbalance for you guys. I did ring the register. We'll celebrate later, but look at the imbalances first for you guys. Uh, sorting. Hey, nothing. Oh, I don't know crazy. KDP, yeah, no. yeah, so I can't that? really talk about that. Uh, BAC is a very small... 1.3 million to buy for BAC is not a big deal. UAL, oh, the buy of a million. Uh, AAL with a sell of a million. Okay, that's weird, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, BA, yeah, nothing really standing out here on the imbalances. Apple, the first of the big names to show up at a 570 to buy. Although, oddly enough, Adara just said $2 billion to the buy side. Amazon's a buy of cool. half a million. Uh, Qcom is a sell, doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a decent enough, I mean, a couple of $500,000, 500,000 share buys on Apple and Amazon. Doesn't feel like it's enough to make it $2 billion, but then you have to remember all these things are more expensive than they used to be. So I took the L on Apple after it being a great short. I tried the long off the 50 level and ended up losing like 30 cents on it. But uh, more sideways action for it. Arm does get down into the 138, so we did ring the register on that one. Uh, if you're looking at why Arm might have flushed, look at AMD give it up. <laughs> AMD gave it up back down into the 205 level. It doesn't matter what you shorted. I suppose instead of Arm, you could have just shorted AMD through 208 and got exactly the same thing. You could have shorted... You could have shorted NVIDIA and got the same thing. Probably this... I mean, not the same percentage move, but you can probably get an effective move that's about the same. Arm dropping $2 is probably the same as NVIDIA dropping 12 So, yeah, you probably got a little bit better of a move on NVIDIA if you took that, because NVIDIA dropped like 15 oh, wow. bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, that is... NVIDIA is coming into selling. day lows. It's coming into the day lows, but what? it's still up 3%. Huh. Still up Absolutely 3%. Absolutely wild. Um, at the end of the day, like, this is one of those... This is one of those situations wow. where... It's hard to be bullish when you sell off like this. The market had just gotten green. The NASDAQ had just gone red to green. And the second we're trying to hold it into the afternoon, the bears come in and start selling it. And, you know, NVIDIA starts giving up gains. I bet you SMCI gave up some gains as well. Yeah, SMCI pulled back about 50 bucks. That's underneath VWAP. So you're not really holding on to what was a lot of strength. I'm not going bearish on this just yet. Because I really need some, I need some more convincing. I don't generally want to think bearish until you're completely reversing. But that's not a terrible start if you want to think bearish. Fail last week's double top, maybe retest, uh, maybe retest 18.3 and fail tomorrow. And I get a little bit more bearish. But uh, good afternoon to be able to get those shorts at the end. Obviously, that's going to get back what we lost on a couple of those longs. Tomorrow worked out, but you know, certainly, not, certainly not Apple, certainly not that Intel trade either. Yeah, it seems like this uh, this 138, definitely interesting. Again, I did kind of transact uh, with it earlier, and then the fact that it comes right into it and holds for now on top of that 138 going into the inbell, uh, with the inbell, uh, is going to be interesting. We pair in about uh, two minutes, so let's see what comes of this 138 going into the close there. Again, that Tesla, good thing, uh, good thing I uh, got out of that one, still continues to sell off there, um, I, I guess. The short was definitely uh, the better play there on, on Tesla, but uh, I definitely got to do a little bit better when I see that change of behavior in, uh, in and around that 187. Got to give it some, a little bit more room there and let it kind of work if it is going to go sideways. But uh, that 138 looking a little tempting, but with only about seven minutes left, 
pretty sure I'm done for the day. I don't, I don't think anything's really showing up uh, right now. I don't see anything on the imbals as well. AMD coming into its lows, uh, SMCI with a 50% retracement pretty much. Like I can tell it's, a, it's just a little bit over 50% here. On the, on the pullback, again, off, off the open, right? Not off of what we did from last, uh, last Friday. Last Friday, we're coming, we're coming up for one from 900, and we tested 1155 today. So about a two and a, uh, 250 points we get the earnings of, a, of a push right there on SMCI. And yeah, a little bit of the opening, uh, opening action there. Let's take a quick look on the 15 minute right there. So opening uh, price low is at 1020 and we are trading at 1075s right now. So absolutely wild there with that flush. Again, you can see it reflected there on the ES and the NQ as the NQ uh, turns uh, red for the day and the, uh, the ES as well. Yeah, are these opening prices right here? Yeah, I guess 830, not totally red just yet. Before, before I get up there, I wanna throw the earnings board up yes. uh, if we can. Um, some, after the market, I'm going to be covering GitLab for you guys. That's probably the big one. And Stitch Fix, I think most people are concerned about. Those 21 and 16% respectively uh, expected moves. But tomorrow morning, top left, NEO. NEO has been trying to hold the bottom. It's been trying to find a bottom for quite some time. And now they got to put up or shut up on those earnings. If it can hold that. It got smoked today down 8% as the Chinese EVs were all under pressure. Uh, we'll be covering some after the market. But tomorrow morning, do not sleep on them. Target as well. Uh, that should be another good one uh, for earnings. So we're still we're at the we're near the end of earnings season, but there's still some names out there this week. Uh, they're going to give you some good movement. Uh, shout out to Yobi. Appreciate you filling in for Sean. Sean's back here tomorrow. I'm going to mosey on over to the desk. I'll see you guys in a couple of minutes for the market recap show. We'll let Obi close it out, doing a fantastic job. Uh, see you guys in a few. It's been a fun one, but we're just getting started on this week. Thank you, Neil. Again, uh, uh, like, I, like I always say, always an honor to, to, to sit beside a more experienced uh, trader. Again, Neil, with the experience of many, many years in the market, I, I'm, always, I'm always asking questions and kind of uh, uh, trying to understand the perspective as well. So I really do appreciate uh, Neil for that. And uh, again, I'm uh, ha happy to be here. Hopefully you guys got some value uh, from today. I did review some of the trades that, that, that I had earlier. A little bit of stubbornness coming in from the weekend. Again, we talk about Tesla. Nowhere did I really have, like I can, I can read out the, the, the plan. <laughs> Neil was talking about uh, the paper um, uh, of, uh, of plan. So let me, go let me go to my Tesla here. Okay, so barcoding from 205 to 198 halves. Play the range or play, play, the, uh, play the break of the range, uh, nothing else. And uh, what did I do? It kind of broke the range and I tried to get long back for the back through into the range. That was absolutely, I don't know what I was thinking there, um, but get my head back on straight by, uh, by, by around lunchtime, get some sustenance in me and then uh, I think I can th I can think a little bit more straight there we we find uh, we find some uh, some interesting tape on top of that 187 and attempt to take for, take it for the long back into VWAP a little bit of sloppy very sloppy execution in my opinion but uh, again something that I definitely have to work on there a lot of opportunity in this market here we talk about that craziness look at this slow steady bid Again, Friday was absolutely ridiculous. I was curious to know how we're gonna do and what type of price action we're gonna have coming in today. Uh, and uh, yeah, a little bit of a little bit of a sideways uh, sideways action on the spy there. Uh, let me just pull it up right there. So uh, look at this spy, a little bit sideways there. So we did kind of pop, coming right back in to some of these opening levels as well, but still holding Friday's action quite well. So I'm curious to know whether or not we hold some of these levels. What is that low? 511.7s it would seem. So yeah, some 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 interesting action indeed. We are catching a strong sell into the end of the day here on a Monday. Again, back-to-back -back weeks have been quite strong, so let's see how we end off this week, even though we've started off with a little bit of a sell here. And uh, with only about two minutes left to go, um, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat there. Uh, people talking about SMCI, of course. So yeah, SMCI, definitely a lot, of, a lot of eyes on SMCI. And another name that people have their eyes on that is almost at all-time highs, 68 thou right now is the high for Bitcoin, 68,000 to the T. Uh, let me just pull it up here for you guys uh, right here. You
go to Coinbase, so right there, boom, 68 is the high on Coinbase right now. Testing that level, 69 being the all-time highs there. Let's see uh, how far we can, uh, we can get there on, uh, on, Bi on Bitcoin. So let me just quickly show you guys what these all-time highs are looking like right here. Uh, we are very, very close, only about a 1,000. So we can definitely see this coming in tomorrow. We can see it tonight, I have no idea, but uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Again, a lot of names in play due to that. We got IBIT, we got Morrow, we got Riot, we got some, um, we, got, uh, we got other tickers that might be, uh, that might be involved in, uh, again, mining or crypto related, uh, crypto related, uh, I guess, niches as well that might also catch a bid with that, with uh, Bitcoin pushing all time highs. Definitely gonna be on watch this week. Soundhound, people talking about, uh, Obi will forget about the bell. No, no, we only got, the, got about 20 seconds left. So I will reach for the countdown here with about five seconds. I will not miss it this time around. But thank you for reminding me with only 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Thank you, Adara. And uh, yeah, so it's been a, it's been a pretty, wild, uh, pretty wild Monday. Again, nothing, nothing too crazy in terms of in terms of my trading. It's it's a it's a work in progress. There, got to do much much better. But hopefully, you guys uh, you guys got some value, got some entertainment from uh, from what we're doing here. But uh, without any further ado, market cap market recap with Neil today. I will see you guys in a little bit. It'll be it'll, it'll, it might it, it might be in a couple of weeks there, but uh, you know <laughs> they told they told me a couple more minutes, so I got to drag this on a couple a couple more minutes. But it's all good. Hopefully you guys had a, had a had a great time. Thank you all again for joining us. And again, we uh, I'm not uh, I'm saying don't go anywhere. We got the market recap with Neil at the big desk today, right now. Take it easy, guys. Look at the man stretch it out like that till we're ready. It's a market recap show. I am a better looking version of Sean. No, just kidding. I'm not Sean. It's me. It's a me. You know, uh, Sean having the day off, as I've said a few times here, he just needed a few extra, uh, well, CO2 and uh, some smoke detectors in the house that I'm sure he's installing today. I guarantee, here's the thing. I, he was said this on the podcast that uh, he needed more of those and check it out. The podcast was absolutely fantastic. I listened to it over the weekend. But I promise you, a hundred, I bet you guys even money, Mr. Katina bought and sold something today. I know, and I wish we could make a bet about this, but we can't. Let's get into some things here because I think it's gonna be pretty interesting. We got a couple of things closing after the close uh, that are coming after the bell. GitLab, which I do not see is out just yet. We got Stitch Fix um, out of pure morbid curiosity. Context Logic also reports. I know nobody cares about them, but hey, man, every now and then a penny stock uh, is interesting to watch. So as everybody rolls on in here, uh, he, did he dip by Pan W today? Is that true, Mike? I didn't double check, and I haven't had a chance to ask him. I do know he was looking at some fantasy football uh, because there was some stuff in our chat about that. So I don't have anything just yet on, although I see a little bit of movement on the 15 here in the three-minute chart on GitLab. I'm not really seeing anything across the wire. I'll let you guys know uh, if I do see some news when it comes to GitLab. And you guys will let me know when it comes out. We'll see that volume start to creep in. I do feel like everything starts out with Bitcoin. And because we can today, I'm going to look at iBit. I know everyone's going to be talking about that fresh break of the $65,000 level, but we got ETFs now. And it behooves us to look at the ETS when we're talking about this to get acclimated with it. So it's a strong move. You have all you have is consistent, strong buying in BTC starting after we had that dip to sell the news on the ETS. You've been going higher and higher. Remember the halving is coming up. We're now into March. That means we're about a month away. Usually a run-up going into the halving, so we're seeing a little bit more of that. Because it's not like, it's not its own sector. I wanted to start with that because the strength, oh my goodness, somebody bought UNG. Not me. Um, this is a daily chart of natural gas. So when it's up 5% and leading the way, just note that the downtrend is not in any way, shape, or form even had a dent put into it. 
this thing is falling faster than the Chicago Bears' chances of getting anything good for Justin Fields. And if you're a football fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They need to trade him, and they can't seem to do it. There was a little bit of strength in GLD. I'm not going to get into that into too much depth because I know a certain somebody who is going to be doing one of these tapping himself on the shoulder. We got the NOS boss coming in for Trader Talk, and he'll be talking about that name to be sure. Or he could just do like the Rob Van Dam and do one of those for himself on the call on goal. That was a good one. If you look at what was down today, what's going on, XLE? I like you. I love you. I think there's a place for energy. I know Sean's been talking about it. I've recently bought both Oxy, Occidental, uh, more of a trade, and then I've been buying some Chevron on some dips, and it looks like it's on the chance to break out. The good news, despite the fact that XLE is one of the laggards down 1%, is you end up still holding out here. Like, you've been trying to break this next 87 level, but you're still holding the major moving averages, and you still have a chance for another leg into the upside. So it's not completely done. I think you're getting a bit of a consolidation effect, maybe a slowdown. It's been a very slow move to the upside. Like, what, what are you going to do when OPEC's like, eh, we're still trying to uh, raise prices by cutting production, and the market doesn't really care yet? It's because tech is super hot, and no one cares about energy when that's happening. We got the uranium, we got the URA pulling back uh, here. However, this had been on a pretty good run. So URA still looking like it's trying to find uh, another step to the upside in the midst of this pullback. A little bit of a red day today, but it did hold on to a previous support level. So that can be, be worth watching. You're on the precipice of a trend reversal. Getting back above 28 is going to be pretty important over here. So I want to make sure of that. GTLB, I, is GitLab out yet? I haven't seen it across the wire. Oh, oh it's out now. Are we down now? GitLab, $65. Well, they said 21%. They didn't say which way it was going to be. And obviously, it's to the downside. The 20% move would give you 75 into that $60 level. Looks like it's already hit. I don't have it on Benzig. I'm going to pull it up on Twitter if I can't get it in a second. But suffice to say, they have probably had a miss. And certainly, guidance is going to be an issue here for GitLab. When you get these growthier type names, like a GTLB, it's going to be all about the guide. So I've got revenue was 164. That looks like it was good. Operating margin of 21%. Yeah, the net loss was still, net loss of 23 cents a share is going to be a bit of the issue here. So it's that loss that they're getting into. But at the end of the day, I mean, the sales did beat. They did beat the expectations. But uh, yeah, that's uh, swinging into a loss. I haven't seen the guide just yet. For, for, Bit, uh, for GitLab, they're down bouncing off that 60 level, which makes some sense. We always talk about this. When you look at that implied move and when you look at these dip buying levels, $60 in here was a higher low and a key support on GitLab. And then you factor in the 20% move from about 75 and you're going to get yourself into that 60. It's got to hold 60. I think they are a trickier name. This is not Pan W. You don't just say, I'm sitting on the bid here on a Pan W. You can't really do that for a GitLab. It's a little bit too weak for it. I haven't seen anything just yet um, with regards to Stitch, to Stitch Fix. That said, it's probably not as big of a name for most people. Oh, wait a minute. They might have just hit as well. Stitch Fix just hit, and it's downside again. This one was spicy for a potential breakout. Uh, definitely spicy through 350, but you got to trade what's in front of you. They were expected a 16% move, and you've more or less gotten that 33 down into like $3 here. So 330 down into $3, holding underneath that. So you're going to get the expected move to the downside on both of these names. That said, they've got decent short floats. You can always get some kind of a relief rally. It could be a sign of the time. We talked about this at the end of the day when the queues couldn't hold on to those highs. And I didn't love the fact, like, what happened at the end of the day on the NASDAQ. What happened at the end of the day on SMCI, AMD, NVIDIA, ARM, uh, go through the entire list. You couldn't hold on to those bids. And now you get a couple of, and GitLab probably more so than Stitch Fix. You get some other um, chinks in the armor as that market is heading into the downside. Just couldn't really hold on to that strength. I do want to get into a trade this morning. And, and I wanted to show you guys something because before Michael comes on here, and I don't want to waste all our time uh, on this, but I think this one's an important one. And this is, I'm not just doing this for myself. I'm doing this for everybody. I'm going to try and pull this up. I don't know if I can zoom this in. 
There we go. I could have gone to my Twitter, but I wasn't logged in over here. It's the fastest way I could do it. SMCI. Expecting the 1080 level as failed break and look for a dip off of it. Now, okay, so Apple looking for a trend short. It never got to 180. I couldn't short it. But I did short it at the first available level. It was weak under that price. We got to short on Apple eventually. NVIDIA passed the 2 trillion mark. I was looking for dip buys, 838, 25, 817. You didn't see any of those today. Uh, but I did find some longs on NVIDIA and AMD anyways. Tesla, same levels as last week. I did try the 98 long with a 30 cent stop. I did not reverse. That was a mistake, but at least I was trading it. I didn't trade SMCI, and this was part of the plan. Expecting a 1080 for a failed break and then buy the dip. So when you've got a plan like that, and this happens, now why, first of all, let's get into why, uh, just very quickly, why was I think it was a failed break at the 1080 level? It was testing, going into the S&P 500, it was testing a fresh top. Testing fresh high, I thought there'd be a dip off of that price, and then you'd have a chance at a rip. And that is basically exactly what happened. I don't have my fail key over here. I have a bunch of other keys. I don't have the fail. This stock, right away at the open, this is it. This is at 930. It pops, goes right to 1080, pulls back into the pre-market high, and then rips. It then rejects again a little bit higher and pulls right back into the pre-market high and then rips. This didn't give you one chance for the fail breakout at 1080 then buy the dip. It gave you two chances and they set up technically. And I don't know why I didn't trade it. Uh, the reason I didn't trade it is because I, I'm just more comfortable trading AMD. I'm more comfortable trading NVIDIA. I'm more comfortable trading Intel. Sometimes the trader, you've got to step out of your comfort zone when an A plus setup presents itself. So that's a big lesson for everybody. I learn something every day from the market. When an A-plus setup is there, step outside of your comfort zone if you have to be able to do it. That was a fail not taking that at SMCI. It was exactly the move that I was anticipating. It even happened the way that I wanted it to, and I still didn't take it. So it's a bit of a trade check for something I didn't do. I could have talked about what did work in AMD or what did work in NVIDIA, but I wanted to talk about the biggest opportunity that I did not end up taking and that is going to be that SMCI trade. We talk about this all the time. As a trader, if you want to grow, you've got to step out of that comfort zone. Um, you look for setups that work for you, but the way to step up isn't necessarily to do a bunch of stuff that doesn't work, it's to find other places to apply the things that do work. So in stocks that you might not normally trade that are moving a bit more, you apply that setup, and then Bob is your uncle. I, just before we go into, uh, before we get to my good friend, who I know is going to be patting himself on the back, which is fine. Once or twice. I'll let you do it three times, Michael, before you come on. I want to get to GitLab. GitLab is actually holding the bounce off that 60 level, but down around that 65. So watch out. The, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't that bad top and bottom, but the rejection here on GitLab, that was the most notable earnings name. We'll get Neo and Target before the bell tomorrow. I think Neo's in some trouble. That $5 level is going to be key where they can hold it. But you don't have to worry about this man's calls holding levels. Oh, I have to hit the button first? I was like, now you've just killed my train of thought, Ram Ram. I had this whole incredible and just unbelievably like nice and thoughtful intro uh, for whatever, it's fine, I'll hit the train of thought. You're kidding me, you're killing me. Michael, oh, which camera am I looking at? You can't switch <laughs> cameras on me, Fabian. For, it used to be over here, and now I'm looking over here. So what I was gonna, what I was gonna say is, uh, Michael, you made a lot of good calls in the past, uh, as we already a lot of know. Uh, good ones, a lot of bad ones too, but we'll just focus on the good ones. Well, look, at the end of the day, I do this all the time as a trader, and you, I've probably said this to you before. I, I, I sometimes enjoy talking first about what I've learned from the losing trade, because that excites me more about, than celebrating a winner. Uh, and over mm -hmm. the years, I've just, I've just found I've gotten more out of doing that, and I have a bad habit of doing it on the show because I always find it productive, so I'm not really celebrating winners enough. But that's just me. Yeah. You've got one to talk about here today, uh, so let's get right into it. Yeah, I just want to follow up on gold this morning. So if you're not tuning in to the morning show, you, you definitely should. But yeah, I was on this morning um, and basically doing a breakdown in gold. I'll refresh for people the ideas behind it. And we did have a good continuation day. So um, I want to start with the monthly chart. And again, we have it here in the picture and picture. I need to get Neil to switch over to his browser charts at some point so we can get you guys on that cool stuff. But uh, zooming out on the monthly chart, the idea is 
And if you've been following me when I've been on the show any number of times that I've talked about gold and this giant cup and handle that we're seeing here with this massive cup and this handle that's taken place for about a year. Um, and that's looks like it's finally breaking out after in 2020. I'm showing right here in this first candle all the way to date. It keeps getting rejected in this kind of 195 area. So when I was doing my scanning last week, where you can see all of the ETFs I have here, I do go through each of those at the end of every week on a weekly chart. We actually made a new weekly all-time closing high in gold. So that always gets my attention, and especially so when this area was one that was rejected so much going back again to that 2020. Every time we got up here, it got rejected. So that put it on my watch list, and I picked a couple gold names for you guys this morning. Um, one of this was G-Roy, which will go here which was breaking out today and did have some good continuation. So I did get involved in this G-Roy around 175 or so. But the underlying synopsis, and regardless of how you want to play it, is if we are going to see gold finally break out of this, I think, 12 to 14 year base at this point, um, I'm going to be looking for a way to get involved and to see if I can hold it just in case we're into a next kind of giant cycle on gold. So, um, first of all, I mean, congratulations. I mean, it was a great, it was a great call. But I wanted to specifically, uh, just the, the G-Roy trade, I wanted to ask a question about this one. Because as, as a non-swing trader, and an, some, some traders that watch the show, they're day traders, we have some swing traders, some people don't even do either, and maybe you're just investing and you're here to learn. Uh, we're trying to cover mm -hmm. all of our bases here. So for yourself, I heard you mention the 175. When I look at the daily chart here, and everyone's going to have a different look, let me get rid of the picture in picture and zoom it in like this is a stock that was already like we talk about stairs to the upside like this was stair step up break the range consolidation and now you're like if you if you're in at seven at 75 this could be breaking it back out so i just i always wonder targets in a situation like this um stop placement um whether or not you're looking for it to like you use anchored vwap a lot i noticed this just did have a bit of a like if you look at what this what this did at the in the middle of February, there was a pretty significant upward move, and I don't wonder if you don't slap an anchored VWAP off a breakout like that. What is your approach to that trade specifically, if you could tell us? Well, so I did do that anchored VWAP, and I have it right here on uh, my chart here. This purple line that's coming up right here that is the anchored VWAP, and that was one of the reasons for it. And I, the reason I chose this candle in particular to anchor it on, as you were talking about, Neil, this to me is the breakout candle. And Brian Shannon always talks about the candle that changes the idea behind the stock, right? That really shakes that action up. And this was a gap up out of a, you know, a beaten up stock that was in a downtrend. And this to me was the first sign that things were changing. So we came back and almost to the penny held that a few days ago. And then yes, I bought this breakout. So for me, I'm a close to close trader. So I generally evaluate my positions on or near the close. So something like G-Roy will be, uh, if it broke tomorrow back down into this pattern, I'm just going to get out right away. And that would be a really microscopic loss on the grand scheme of things. When it comes to profit taking, the only thing that I've figured out to do is the same thing that you guys do as day traders is you sell in parts. So if I get a move, you know, tomorrow, that's another significant up move, I'd probably take out a third or half the position. And then I like to use moving averages for a trailing stop. So you no moving average is, is special. You pick one that makes sense for your time frame. For me, it's usually either the 8 EMA or the 21 EMA. And again, no special reason for that other than one is going to follow price very closely if I want to be in a shorter term trade. And one's going to follow price a little bit further away if I want to give it a little wiggle room and be a longer term trade. So a name like this, where if I think that gold is going to break out here, that we could have a multi-week or a multi-month run, I may pick the 20-day moving average or the 21 EMA or something and just say as long as it doesn't close below that I want to stay in because for me and the way I trading the way I trade my advantage as a swing trader is that if something wants to go for months I want to find a way to be in it for months because I can I can have that advantage of of time whereas day traders that's something that you have to kind of battle against 
Absolutely. And just for everyone out there, like it's, uh, you hear it a lot. The eight, sometimes it's the nine, but like the eight and 21, if you're like, if you're a short term trader, the best way to think about the eight and 21, I don't use them. I don't use them anymore. I, there were points in my career that I did, but the eight mm -hmm. and 21 for day traders and swing traders, just think of it like the 50 period and the 200 for long term, for like the long term. It's like, that's like, those are the first two moving averages that people tend to look at. And like, you kind of find things from there, but it's important what you said find what works for you uh, and then go from that point. That you can't, I can't say that enough just because the 8 and 21 is something that works for you, Michael. I know you do a lot of back testing and a lot of charting uh, to make sure that you're taking things that make sense. Make sure everyone's doing that as well. Yeah, it's all time frame. So uh, a buddy of mine that works at Trade Ideas, he uses the 10 SMA and that's his bread and butter and that's his entire trading strategy is around the 10 SMA. But yeah, you're right. It works for him and you need to make sure that it works for you and your hold time. If you're someone who thinks this G-Roy is going to be a multi-month or a multi-year hold, then using something like the ADMA is going to get you chopped out. So yeah, it's finding the time frame for the, tr the trade and then finding the moving average that makes most sense for that time frame. So there's that. Some people use AVWAPs for trailing stop. There's people who just use ATR trailing stops. There's all kind of advanced ways you can do it. But yeah, you just want to find something that says, okay, this is giving me the opportunity to hold on if the trade continues the way that I think it's going to. And then if it doesn't, it's going to get me out uh, for some sort of a gain on a reversal. That's what it's all about. And uh, I have to, I had to let you know this one because uh, Sean was off today. I was hosting the show with Obi. And uh, this morning, Obi has a big note, like Sean has sticky notes. I use like an iPad. And then Obi mm -hmm. has like an old school, like big, big notebook that he uses. And I was going through it. He let me look at it. And uh, guess what tool Obi is starting to use on a daily basis for some of his entries and exits? I'll give you one guess, Michael. An anchored VWAP? Is he getting into that? Oh, nice. yeah. And what's That's interesting good. about it is it's like you said. Now, when we, when we first were introduced to it, I know when I was reading the book, like the easiest and most obvious place to use is like, okay, well, post earnings, right? Like that's what is yep. a moment where now you want to anchor to something while everyone's making some decisions after a stock has earnings or maybe you get like an Apple event, something really mm -hmm. obvious. But the point that you made about that, um, you said it more eloquently, but the candle that changes everything. You know, when you look at a chart, and it's like, well, that changes everything. And I didn't even have to know what was going on with that G-Roar. I just, I just looked down at the daily chart. Well, that changes everything. That's where you start your VWAP from. And that's exactly how he's been applying it. It's been working for him. We were talking about how he's been growing in the last couple of months. And that's one of those things. When you find that change candle, slap an anger VWAP, and you can find it um, at Trade Ideas, which he also uses, by the way. Yeah, and I, I brought up the one of the scans that we did here just for a little bit of a plug. And if you're always confused on where to anchor your VWAP to, that's actually something we've solved in the system. So I hung out with Brian. We built this together. It's a, it's a product in conjunction with Brian. But if you just go to my chart real quick, we have that particular scan. And the, the, this scan is for stocks that are pulling back to an anchored view app from a large volume spike. So here's this ASPN, and the dark purple line is always going to be the anchored view app. And as I click through, you can see it's drawing that for me because, you know, for me, and this took me a long time for Brian to convert me. I've known him for many, many years. Um, but the more I played, and for me, it was actually building because I did all the mathematics into the system with this. Uh, that changed it for me entirely because I kept seeing things getting to an anchored view app. Here's CIB, which is a commercial bank. For four days in a row, it's come down to this anchored view app from the earnings and bounced off. So it's one of those, the more you see it, the more you're like, okay, I've got to get involved in this. And um, with all the respect I have for Brian Shannon as the godfather of anchored view app, uh, I think Obi's going to be really, really impressed with that. And it kind of sets them apart because I've noticed there's not a lot of day traders using this. And I really think it's been relegated to the swing trading time frame, but I would love to see some day traders plotting these anchored view apps out, using support and using them as support and resistance, and then coming up with like a day trading plan around them. I think there'd be a really interesting edge to be had there. I put the challenge to Sean and myself for finding some of that out. You know how it goes sometimes. Um, traders get, you get comfortable. Yeah. You're like, you know what works for you. And sometimes mm -hmm. it gets, I've been doing it way too long. It's really easy to just continue to do what works. And yep. I was mentioning this actually, as a matter of fact, 
I missed a big trade on SMCI today, just by like it did exactly what I wanted it to do, but I hate trading that stock because of the way it has the spreads and it's a thousand dollar name and it's like, you can size differently, fine, that's all well and good, I just don't like the way that it trades. But uh, you've got to be able to step out of your comfort zone, so you're 100% right. You want an edge in trading. It's, it's not always enough to have a, have a couple of plans that work, the market's always changing, and if you can be a step ahead, like Obi's trying to do, which is working for him, by the way, um, with anchored VWAP. Uh, I think that's Good. fantastic. Uh, can I, before, I, before I get some last ideas from you, because I know you always do, mm-hmm. um, have you noticed this XLF continued breakout on the weekly? I have. Uh, I can bring that up right now. But And this, to me, is my argument for people who are talking about, you know, it's only seven stocks, it's an AI-driven rally, um, all of these these different things that you hear perma bears say on Twitter. Uh, but I actually bring this XLF to their attention. This is, you know, you can't have a rally, in my opinion, in the U.S. stock market without banks, right? There's such a large component of the U.S. market. And we're, you know, even more so in the S&P 500, this XLF has been dramatically outperforming all of these individual sectors other than XLI, which is another one that's interesting, which is industrials. And for me, it's XLF, which is financials, and XLI, which is industrials. Those have as little to do with AI as I think physically possible, but are showing massive, massive gains and massive breakouts. So for me, I love to see this because in bull markets, you want these sectors to catch up. You know, you can have bubbles when it comes to Ozempic plays and AI plays and all that. But when it comes to industrials, the the people that build stuff, if they're doing well, and the people that finance the people that build things are doing well, then to me, that makes me a little bit more comfortable. This is a bull market and not some, you know, um, mania fused rally. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. And in... And it, it, pe- people get so complacent. What's weird is, and this is normal, you get a lot of complacency in bull markets. Let's be real. Yeah. Everyone's always looking for where the top might be. It, it, it's, it, it's, you, no matter how long you're in the trading game, that absolutely never changes. I get, I'm guilty of it myself. Sean and I talk about this all the time. You're always, oh, I'm going to sell this stock, and ARM is overvalued, I'm going to sell it, and then after I sell it, it's 20% higher. Oh, we're not at the top yet, like that kind of a thing. It's perfectly normal um, for that. But like, if you do, you do have a little bit more of a breadth than you might think. You could argue about you know, the Russell slowing down a bit, but uh, there is some strength out there. So uh, any final thoughts that you might have before we get you out of here uh, to start this week? Great call on gold. I love this XLF. I think a lot of people are going to at least look at Anchor VWAP. And I want to point one thing out. As I keep saying, I like repeating this. An indicator is a good start. Yes. You've, got to, you've got to tailor it to your own trading strategy. You've got to put the time and effort into back testing and finding execution strategies for yourself. Um, Michael's been doing this a very long time, and he's put that time and effort in. I don't want anyone to think it's going to be it's easy, but you've got to start with something that gives you an edge and just put that time and effort in there. That's why I tout things like that, and I tout things like uh, trade ideas for getting you a start. Yeah, so a couple of things. One, your your comment on um, always trying to find the top. I always bring myself back. I think it's a Peter Lynch quote that um, there's more money lost in predicting the bear market than the bear market itself. So um, I, I love that quote, and I say it to myself all the time because you're right. When things are going very well, especially I think as seasoned traders, you're looking for that other shoe to drop and to say, okay, you know, at some point we all know the fun ends, but the question is, are you going to be one to kind of leave the party early and, or are you going to just stay until the party closes down and maybe that last, you know, 20 minutes of the party is no longer fun. But I always love that quote, more money lost anticipating the bear market than the bear market itself. And um, on the indicator talk, I, I just can't agree more. They are indicators. They are meant to indicate something. Um, so there's nothing wrong with saying I'm only going to buy stocks above a rising 200 day moving average. That's a great filtering mechanism. It's a great indicator. But it doesn't mean you buy every stock above a rising 200 day moving average. It means you have a plan 
uh, to when you're going to buy stocks and why you're going to buy them. And then that's one thing to like filter them out. So I did want to leave you with uh, with two sectors. However, mm -hmm. one I have up on the screen here right now, and this is KRE and this is regional banks. And I know this is kind of scary right now with what's happening to another bank out there. But I was shocked when I was going through my scanning how well the regional bank index was actually holding up considering that New York Bank Corp thing is just absolutely falling out of bed. And speaking of anchored view app, I anchored a view app from this really significant low that we had in October and we're holding that area right there. So, you know, if you want to be quote unquote safer, I think the KRE, which is a diversified uh, uh, basket of regional banks is a good way to go. If you want to be a little riskier, maybe you go pick some regional banks as well. And then this is just something kind of food for thought where UNG seems to be bouncing here. We have this low at $18 a share. I'm not going to do anything until we retake that low of $18 a share. But if you look at the monthly chart I have here in the bottom left-hand corner, our picture-in-picture -picture oh. charts, this was 121 down to 17. So at some point, we're going to have a pretty massive rally here. Uh, I don't know if it's right now, but I was very interested to see that it was kind of leading the ETF race for me today. They call it the Widowmaker for a reason, uh, natural gas. Because yeah. if you get it right, oh, you're going to get it right, and it's going to trend forever. But... Uh, Hey, it's, it's, it's a lot of traders are peaking their, it's at peaking their interest. And we'll get, I'll have some notes on KRE as well. Um, I actually like, that's a good setup. And the fact that it's holding up as well as it is with NYCB and their news is a big one. Uh, shout out to you. Thank you. It's always good having you on. Great call uh, with Gold this morning and the setups that we had. We'll talk again on Friday and maybe recap uh, some of those. So best of, uh, best of wishes for the rest of the week. Hopefully your trades all end up well like they are starting. Uh, the week, Michael. Well, thanks for having me, and thank you for not bringing a storm to the Maritimes, because every time it's the two of us on, I have to go shovel afterwards, so I'm just going to be grateful <laughs> that uh, I don't have to do that today. Enjoy, man. I wish, I got to get out east. It's, uh, I wasn't there long enough. The next time I'm out there, we'll grab a beer together. I love, no, I, I love it out in Halifax, but uh, uh, enjoy the rest of the week there, Michael. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Talk to you later. See you, brother. Which camera am I going to after this? That's what I want to know, Ram Ram. <laughs> this one? I stay at the same camera. So I don't get to go to the other camera anymore? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, sometimes it's fun to just like do the whole, like, I'm a professional. No, you, Ram Ram, you got to, when I'm going, okay, now you're just messing with me. I want to get, I want to get the roll call. Before I get to the roll call, where am I, oh, I'm looking at this camera. You had me looking at a camera. There's, a, a, there's like three. You tricked me. Um, but before I get to the roll call, I wanted to say something about that KRE because what most people don't know about new, uh, NYC Bank Corp is they basically are, like, they do all of the lending for the rent control, uh, rent control names in, in New York, which, of course, is a bit of a depressed uh, sector. So there's a chance that there isn't a lot of contagion to some of the other regional banks with this NYCB thing. It might be localized. Again, this is just what smarter people than me have been saying. So I think that puts some weight into the call. Um, that Michael Noss was saying. Let's get some roll call in here because we got some people. We got our peeps in the chat here. What up? I see. Oh, HPDS saying thank you, Michael. I hope you're still. I don't know if you can still hear that. Uh, hopefully, he has some good weather out there. Monty G, what up? I love the after shows. You rock, Monty. We love you. TH, you're right. Shout out to you. Ram Ram is messing with me. That's how she rolls. Easy Trader. Silva. Silva the Blue. We love you. Viral H HX. Uh, we got Richard Fan. I'm a fan of Richard too. All the Richards out there. The Boring Man. What up? B Davis. Chef Joe in the house. I'm hungry right now, Chef. Uh, I don't even know what's for dinner tonight, but I'm going to eat a ton of it because I'm absolutely starving. Didn't have enough salad today at lunch. Henry Chung. What up? Derek Thompson. Angry Bear. My daughter loves the Angry Bear books. It's like this guy, like Nick Bland, writes them. He's some Australian guy, and they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, Happy Zombie, Pranya in the chat. Uh, we got Mr. Westermeyer. I will do that challenge if you send us a new eight ball. Big Kyle Burdett, what up? Louisick just gifted me 5K. I'm spinning it right now. Spin 5,000. Let's see if it wins. I'll see what happens. Uh, who else we got here? Streamlabs. 
Oh, it didn't work? I just spun and it didn't give me the points. I'm probably going to lose them. Uh, Mr. MacArthur, Captain Jane, the MVE. What up? Who else we got? Neil MacArthur. You don't spell it the right way, but you're cool in my books. I love the name Neil for obvious reasons. Joe Schmo in the house. I loved the Joe Schmo show. Most people don't know about that hidden gem. It is absolutely hilarious, the Joe Schmo show. Fabian and Ramin Wad, no clue what I'm talking about because they're both very young. Uh, Billy Turner, Sailor Moon, Sabu in the chat, Bright Awakening. Who else we got? Ponzi in the house. What up, Ponzi? Mo Fun, Cryo X. I'm trying to get to everybody, um, but we're kind of running out of time here. And I did want to end with a question because I was too busy over the weekend and it was sold out anyways. I didn't get a chance to see Dune 2. So, you guys got to let me know. Is this a, Neil, find a way to watch it as soon as possible, it was so damn good, get there next week, or you're going to be a bit disappointed, just wait till you can watch it at home. Uh, so you guys let me know what I got to do here. Uh, DJ Quill just said ATL in the house. What up? I've only been through Atlanta. I need to get down to the ATL at some point. But you guys let me know. I'm just Maybe DM me or something. I want to hear about Dune from, from our crew. I just want to read about other people uh, and what they think about it. I want to know in our community because we all like kind of the same thing. So you guys let me know uh, if it is going to be a good one. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, it's been absolutely fun. I love doing the afternoon show in Sean's Stead. We make sure we give you the real, real here. And that's why we have real trading um, because we're real traders and it can't be a better brand. Uh, make sure you check out that podcast. Uh, when you leave here, <laughs> there were some jokes. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, yeah, there was some funny stuff on the podcast. At least I thought it was funny. And a lot of good content as well, talking about the Bitcoin moves. So you can check that out. We'll be back tomorrow morning to trade some post-GitLab and Target earnings. We'll also get in the fall morning where you may get Neo in the morning. That should be very spicy. We'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm Neil in Sean's stead, and it's been a blast, and I'll see you tomorrow.